exploited, tortured, killed, uh, you know, and everyone, most people think it's normal still. Most people are happily engaged in it. And it seems a bit, not just strange, but just way off, like really inappropriate to be celebrating uh, veganism when, when it's, you know, like in this state of affairs. What, what do you say to that, man? Are you, are you pro or anti or indifferent or what do you think about World Vegan Day? So, um, well, there are many, I think there are many ways to see that. I've heard about, I'm about six minutes in the backstage and about 10 minutes in the stream. So I get that. I saw your video as well on that matter. And I understand like you from, I can think of the pros. All right. The pros is that is a day that's about veganism. So like, you know, it's, we have a day for AIDS. We have a day for, you know, special celebrations, but uh, I mean, this is this is a pro this is something that it's a good thing uh but you know everything has to be in perspective so if you uh you know you could just take a minute uh, back and you know think of that you can also say that uh what's to be celebrated like to me it's just you know it's the very most basic thing someone can do to be vegan like it's as basic as i don't know like how easy is that nowadays especially in the western societies just too easy, I would say so. Um, yeah. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but if you just uh, if you just see what's happening, you know, by the second, I, it's just not enough. It's just not enough just to have one day to celebrate what what's normal. Like, I mean, <laughs> where's the where, where, where's the logic in that? So I I understand why it's important maybe to have this as a day, but it, it's it's a lot more important to. Um, just really go deep and see what's veganism about and see why why do we do this and why should we you know consider this um so i i would yeah. say like it's not a bad thing but it is a bad thing if we just oh. say it's one day in a year like it's just this day and that this day you know uh let's you know let's have a meat free monday like what <laughs> Do you, uh, let's say, um, yeah. let's, let's st like, I always, you know, put things in perspective. Let's say, let's not steal on Saturdays. What? I mean, what about the rest of the days? Like it's, it doesn't make sense. You know, the logic yeah. behind that. But yeah, I just seen a comment just up uh, from Henry Abovo actually is saying that it's about, uh, you know, the, we have to be, he feels that we should be looking to have a fun time, sometimes time from others who are looking in. And I, I, I totally get that. I think we can, show that vegans have fun um i think where i'm drawn like for example we have the vegan camp out we have vegan festivals where clearly we all get together and we have a fucking awesome time like that happens right we do that and that, that's huge it, it's uh it's got all the videos coming out of that, and, and of course we have fun it's just i think this like world vegan day i don't know it's just it feels like i said earlier it feels like what we should be doing rather than a world world vegan day of celebration we should we have a world vegan day of remembrance uh for what has happened and what is continuing to happen I said earlier we should be in my opinion having a minute silence we should be raising money we should be um doing things that are actually really meaningful and powerful um not celebrating vegan hot dogs and vegan burgers that that's kind of what i'm getting at here i, I think if, if you want to have days where we i don't know sorry plant-based food that's something that should be plant-based food day I'm, i'd be in for that i'd celebrate plant-based food day um but veganism is not food veganism is about is about an ethical stance so to have world vegan day just doesn't doesn't make sense for me uh to celebrate world vegan day in the way we do it doesn't it doesn't match up with me uh, maybe it should be renamed to like world plant-based food day <laughs> world plant-based diet day i think that that would make some sense right i, I then I, i'll be in for it i'd be celebrating with my pizza my hot dog i'd be doing selfies and shit i'd be i'd be up for that <laughs> i'd be uh yeah world vegan jungle day or, or something just like specifically food and uh, in the title it would make more sense for me but i don't know i feel like we're confusing people when we have world vegan and we're just celebrating food and 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 there's also uh, i want to show you guys i want to uh, we're going to get into something a bit controversial sorry um to do this to you but i i, I have i have to talk about it uh, it's um it's on my mind it's annoying me a little bit i want to share it with you so let me just pull it up so this was something else that was posted on uh, world vegan day right so oh, shit, i don't want to do that <laughs> unlike all right look so this is from an account called queer brown vegan all right i don't know if you know this account but basically, they did uh, they posted the issues with the vegan lifestyle movement, and they posted it on, on World Vegan Day and kind of linked to in World Vegan Day. And, and 
this is kind of linked with World Vegan Day because it was posted on World Vegan Day, but at the same time, something I want to go through and you guys think because this kind of post seems to be going viral. Like this one has like 12,000 likes and like a shit is obviously been shared all over the internet. There's been similar posts like this and it seems like it's the, the in thing these days for vegans to shit post about veganism. And, and when they shit post, it seems to go like viral, right? So I'm trying to understand what's going on here and I want, I want to go through this with guys. So the issues with the vegan lifestyle movement. So this person's making a very obvious thing here saying that the vegan doesn't excuse you from being racist, homophobic, transphobic, fatphobic, and xenophobic, right? Which I'm sure everybody here agrees with. And, and you know, I, if you disagree, I'd be surprised. <laughs> I hope you agree. Uh, that seems like common sense. But then this person goes on to say that apparently the vegan lifestyle movement um, upholds colonialism and erases the work of, of BIPOC vegans um, and basically just like this is completely baseless. Right? There's, no, there's no proof, no evidence, there's nothing. And this is posted on World Vegan Day with 12,000 likes, right? This is kind of the begin, beginning of this. So but just give me your initial reactions to something like this. Have you seen anything like this before? Have you seen people posting this kind of stuff and it going viral before? It's the first time you've seen it. What, what are your thoughts on these kind of posts? And the content, what do you think about what this person is saying, so importantly? Is it true or false? Yeah, so when I look at this, I've, I've seen it many times before. It's, I, th I think it's probably stemming from the discussion that when you're looking at uh, the main kind of vegans, you're looking at them, and for, especially for these individuals, they're seeing, like, white men and that's it. And, I mean, you look at them and they are, and sometimes people are saying that people are white when they're not, like... Uh, Apparently, people say Paul's white, and he's he's not, is he? The Paul Bashir? Yeah, Paul Bashir, sorry. No, he's not white. No, neither no, is uh, they're both, um, I don't know where they're from. Uh, oh, well, I know where they're yeah. from. They're from Australia, but I don't know their ethnicity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think it's stemming from that, but I don't think that's really... If, if, if you were to see that as an issue, because I think, obviously, loads of people can have different experiences, so it's, it's brilliant if you can get loads of different people from different groups and experiences of waves of life to encourage people within their groups and experiences to do the same thing. So it makes sense in practice, but it's like, well, how how has that come to be in the first place? If there really is this issue with, uh, you know, too many like white men in their view, like who's who's responsible for that? I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking what donors, like, I, I don't know if it's, I mean is it is it us is it our fault can i respond to this because like this person's talking about the vegan lifestyle movement right uh, in the, in the uh, animal rights activism movement so mm -hmm. to say um there are a lot of like yeah there are many famous people like uh like you know we've got one in here hench, hench ever for who's doing activism we've got joey carbstrong there's uh from get jamie these are the main guys who are deemed to be like i don't know they're the most popular in activism but we're talking mm -hmm. about lifestyle if you're talking about vegan lifestyle, um, then you're then you're including plant-based um, YouTubers, right? Um, this, this is absolute bullshit. The the most famous vegan YouTubers are women and are women that aren't white. They are Asian and black. The majority, the two of the biggest accounts that are doing vegan lifestyle posts. One of them is Asian, an Asian woman. One of them is a black woman. Uh, one's called uh, Potato Soul, and the other one's called um, fuck something. I can't remember the name of the other one. I did a video about this. So I don't, what are they talking about? The majority of, of, of people posting about vegan lifestyle are definitely not white men. Like, it's the complete opposite. If, if you go on YouTube and type in uh, vegan food, vegan diet, vegan lifestyle, it is not white men that appear. Um, it is mainly women and even women, of course. So I, 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 I have to say I disagree with this post, and I, but I also, you're mm -hmm. saying about the activism side of things too. Yeah, it's good though, it's because what, what, when you look at the origin of like vegetarian or vegan, you know, plant-based diets, a lot of them are in like non-Western areas anyway. So I, I would yeah. assume that you, you're going to have groups who who aren't white who are talking about it more. But I think I think it is. I think it because I can't think of what else it'd be. It's literally within the activism sphere, people are looking at the main people and assuming yeah. that they're the. People. But when you look in, like when you actually go to an activist event. You can guarantee a lot of the time it's mainly women and it's usually a woman who's like organized it anyway so there, there are, oh, yeah, there are yeah. movement um I, I don't know like yeah it would be good to see 
more but like i i'm not seeing i don't look at plant-based moot like i don't know who potato soul is or or anyone because i don't really i'm not interested right. in food recipes or plant-based stuff um yeah i don't know i feel like I this think is an issue where if if it changed it wouldn't be enough because i don't you know what i mean like i haven't seen a, a, a clear indication of the numbers of groups and how yeah. many there are it'd be interesting to see but i don't know when would be enough I think also, like you, we've mentioned, sorry to keep talking here, dude. I, I know you probably want to say something, but I'll, I'll just finish this, uh, <laughs> this little point. Um, but um, you're talking about, like, yeah, I did mention, like, Ed and Joey James and, and, and the big social media guys, but that they're, they're big social media guys. Uh, they're not leading mm -hmm. any, any movements. They're not leading any no. groups. They're not leading teams, right? They're social media guys. The leaders on the ground, the teams, and, and the people who are on the ground in all of the world, you're right. It's majority. It's majority women, um, mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean that they're being ignored. It just means that they're not doing as much social media work because they're busy yeah. on the ground doing the <laughs> a lot of time. They're, they're, you know, they're, yeah, they're sabs or something. They <laughs> right? don't need to. They don't want their face on camera. Like they don't want to be on camera. Exactly. Like a lot. Of, it's a, exactly. uh, yeah. And it also comes down to the fact that you know uh, James, Joey, and Ed have spent the majority of their careers practicing honing social media right that that's the, the where they decided they were gonna go it's what they've been doing for years so it's no surprise they're fucking good at it they know what to do they know what to say they know to film it they know what to title it they know how to do the hashtags so it's no surprise that their shit blows up and then and then you know you'll find some um i, I don't know let's say like a, a girl somewhere that starts an account from brand new and then they'll start complaining, or oh, I'm not saying this happens, but maybe it does happen. So oh, it's because I'm a woman. It's like, no, it's like maybe because you've not been doing it for like five, six years, um, you know, like these guys have. And maybe it's or maybe it's just because your content is not new, maybe. Or maybe it's because, I don't know, there could be many reasons, but being a woman, you can't just straight away jump to that. And I find a lot of people jump to that conclusion immediately without considering mm -hmm. okay wait a minute the content high quality is it good um are they have they been it for a long time are, are they experienced have they have mm -hmm. they found you know collaborated with other people if they you know and if all of that has been done and it's still not blowing up then maybe to decide okay wait a minute there's something fishy going on here is this is this a sexism thing maybe after you've been through all of that maybe then yeah. talk about whether or not it's a, a problem of sexism but uh, i find that people are not I, really they're really irrational about this stuff you know yeah, I think that's the annoying thing because there's a lot of irrationality. So then that means that um, some of the maybe legitimate problems could get in the way um, of seeing that there might be an issue. Like, for example, because there's a lot of women who are vegans, maybe uh, they enjoy watching a man speak. Do you know what I mean? Like that could be the case where you've got like a certain demographic um, or, you know, there could there could be issues where someone may respect a certain person more than another one. But it's, it's difficult yeah. to analyze it and really understand what the problem is when, as you say, the conclusions are being jumped to a lot of the time and you, you make a, an assumption about something and someone's down your throat immediately. So it's you can't really have these discussions without it being this kind of bloodbath a lot of the time. So uh, that's yeah, you're, being a, you're being too rational and you're, you must be a bigot. You know, you're, you're too rational right now. You're, you're a right winger, aren't you? You're clearly, oh, clearly yeah. a Nazi. Clearly I, a Nazi. I, I, uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's this or the other. Like, it's this or the other. There, there is no, there is no, you know, something in between. Um, no. Yeah. Totally, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so can I go? Like, I, I think I, I've, to I've thought of a few points. Like, you know, most of the activism here in Greece, in Athens, and maybe, you know, in a few cities outside of Athens, like, Pretty much, uh, the organizers are women, or they're, you know, at least, you know, they're at least women. Uh, I would say that, you know, uh, like vegan veganism is just something that uh, has the same principles with, you know, uh, you know, with regarding humans and animals. Like they share the same principles, but it's, it's uh, there are two different things, but they share the same principles. So I would say, like, pretty much, it's hypocritical to be a vegan. But you know, oppress humans like this. I don't know. It just doesn't you know make sense to me. Um, so mm -hmm. I can, I think this this is uh, I don't know. It it can be someone's experience, like some having someone being vegan and you know oppressing humans or being mean against humans, even other vegans. But that doesn't mean that it defines 
the whole vegan movement. And I think that, you know, those things, they go viral and they get lots of attention because people are looking for ways like to say things about vegans. That's number one. And to, for, you know, just to find a reason to cancel veganism, just because they do not really cancel the principles of veganism, you know, um, they canceled the you know the activist or the human that did that and he was vegan so hop all vegans are like that i don't want, want to be you know don't just don't want to be a vegan um and this yeah, yeah. Is, here's the reason why i don't want to so i think this this is like i don't know i don't i i don't feel it was a bad person but i also do not want to be mean you know towards anyone by saying this but i think you know it's just an excuse not to to do what you, you know, you, you just deep inside, you know, what's right. Like, I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, this, yep. so I'd say this person is a vegan, no man, this person is like a vegan, this is a vegan account that shared that post. So it's, yes. it's a, but you're, you're saying the reason that it got famous is because yep. people like yep. to, yes. that get me, like, I follow exactly. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's like, I mean, why wouldn't go? I don't know. Like if every single one and of those likes they were just you know uh they were vegans they could be they could have a bad experience mm -hmm. with another vegan you know person i mean that's the the i think that's you know in the in the context of a human experience like you can say because you can say pretty much the same thing with someone that eats meat you can i mean you can be yeah. eating meat and be a, a homophobic you can be a racist you can be that like this it's the same human principles like it's i think it's i don't know i i don't think you know um it's a human characteristic i don't know it's, it's a characteristic of a person not something that characterizes sure. veganism this is what i what i want i get you i think one thing i wanted to pick up uh, you mentioned in the whole in, in that uh in your in your point was about uh, being a, a consistently or, or being hypocritical when if someone is a vegan but is also has is also being a racist or being a vegan who's also being a sexist I'm like, or or um, you know as it's more often than not that there are vegans that are uh, simply let's say they're not racist or sexist but maybe they're not interested in fighting against racism or sexism right so we can get there's two separate things here I think they're very different I think uh, you're right in that a sexist can be vegan but they're inconsistent. Because if you're going around and saying like, hey, um, you know, the appearance of an animal, species of an animal doesn't matter. I, I, I believe they should be treated equally. But you're drawing a line between, uh, you know, the gender between uh, in humans, then you're inconsistent. You're, you're a hypocrite. You, you can still, you're still a vegan because, you know, your, your values towards the animal are they are, but you're a hypocrite and you're inconsistent and you should be, you, should be, you know, that should be called out. Right? That should be something that people talk to you about and say, hey look you're full of shit like you care about animals what about why are you being a sexist asshole why are you being a, a racist right and um, so that that's something that i think i think it's not I, I hate it when people say that oh you're not vegan because you have this view about humans it's like well no they're still vegan but they're a piece of shit <laughs> you know like, you, you don't have vegan assholes out there inconsistent hypocritical people that are still vegan and that, that need, yeah it needs to be dealt with sure um, I guess with the post that we just looked at, the problem I take is that they act like it's some kind of epidemic in veganism. Like, <laughs> veganism is just full of racists and sexists. And it's like, no, it fucking isn't. But like, there are people, just like in, in, in feminist groups, there are racists. And, and in Black Lives Matter, there are sexists. Of course, they exist. Like, groups have people that have inconsistent values with the core message of the group. But it's not like there's an epidemic in the vegan movement of people that somehow how like hate people of color or something it's what these posts tend to suggest um and it's very in fitting with the popular narrative which is why they blow up right they get super famous like you said and loads of people who are maybe not vegan or maybe they are vegan but they are also like uh into social justice they, they latch onto it it's huge right now you know it's a big deal right now and it's like it's, it's the in thing to share something like this and virtue signal all of your followers right so um yeah it's Go on, sorry, I, I saw you. That's what I wanted to ask, actually. So, no, um, I was going to say, so out of curiosity, on that post, is anybody who fulfills mm. these groups actually linked within the post? Tags? Anyone who, uh, how do you mean, sorry? like. Uh... So, so they're saying we need to, like, have this, like, group or people from this, like, group who... Um, 
are part of the vegan movement, we need to like elevate their voices. Have they actually done that? Right at the bottom of the post is tagged in a few accounts that he thinks you should go and follow. Um, and uh, that's it. See, that's the there's thing. No, like, no language. Yeah. It, it just shouldn't, instead of it being a kind of like, oh, this is wrong. Like it should be a kind of, here's the, an example of something that's right. I think in too many places, because especially if you're dealing with something that's like veganism, where people, yeah, want to already like have an excuse to be against it anyway, and that's why mm. it, it blows up. Um, you should just be like, okay, well, you know, like I, I'd love to see more lesbian creators, just because that's that's how I, you know, I'd love to. So if I were to, the best thing I could do is just share a bunch of lesbians, and then happy days then more people would see because a lot of the time you see people like oh we need more women activists you know who go on the street and film videos and do outreach um but then you do ask that um these people like okay so who do you watch and a lot of the time they don't really have anyone to tell you about and that might be a, an issue because uh you know these people aren't as popular because there are women who do it I, I used to do it um but you know, the best way to do it would just be to share out like a lot of these accounts because there are so many people who are vegan and who are on the like social media are doing these things. So it's like, well, why not just actually use that space to just massive list or feature people? Um, at least they featured a few people, but that was the last kind of point. So <laughs> you're a bigot. You're just so bigoted. This is like, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't believe like your words are literal violence right now. Uh, how can you say all of these things? I just, it's just, you know, it's, it's too logical. You've got to be more emotional. You've got to, you've got to really start like screaming at me now. Like you okay, realize you're letting well. down all these people. They see, they see a woman in this live stream and they're like, yeah, she's going to, she's going to be totally telling him no, no, no. Like this is, you need, you're, you're letting on the side here. <laughs> I am, I am, I'm, 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 I'm being submissive and giving in to my uh, female. No, it's because it's just because then no, I think it's your internalized it's, misogyny. It's what you're getting into. Yeah, no, it's it's just because like That's so like when you say. look at something like intersectionality, okay, like uh, the, the the political stance of it in itself, right? The the term because everything in a sense is related in some way. Like if you are abusive towards a person, it is obviously likely you're going to be abusive towards an animal. You know, um, serial killers. Mm -hmm. You know, they look for a history of um, you know um, abuse towards animals at a young age. Like these things do intersect in some way. So it, in principle, it like makes sense as a term. But then when you try and put it into practice, it's very much like okay, well there's going to be times where things bump into each other or we have to focus on this thing, you know, single issue campaigns. So, so it's like, so that's why I can't just go to you and be like, you're completely wrong or that you're completely right. Because I, I think there are some issues, but I don't, I don't think we should be framing it in this manner at all. Like, and if they really even are issues, really, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. If, uh, if anyone's like, I, mean, I, I I think we can we can this is this is whole live stream on this so i think maybe we should like look to close this off because uh i, yeah. I want to get i'd like to and properly represent myself in this topic because i've made a whole video yeah, on it so if, if if you're watching this now and you're thinking what well, sounds like a piece of shit here that's all right i have not given my full <laughs> my full view on this uh, i'll link a video in the description where i actually talk about intersectionality what it actually is and and how i Believe, like I am actually supportive of it, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But there are things that I'm not supportive of, such as this one. And just before we do wrap it up, um, sorry if you have something to say, but I think I think maybe we've got into this for a bit too long. I want to show you I'm this real quickly. This, this is the account of the guy who posted this. Or I, I'm sorry, I said guy. Oh yeah, he's got a he him. Okay, he's cool. I, I, this is the account of the guy who posted this. And look, we've got one post about veganism, and everything else is about other things. So this is kind of like a, a, a really common theme. People do this. They post about plant-based food or they post about other things. And the only post they have about veganism is one where they're shitting on veganism and it goes insanely viral, right? And this guy's title, his name is, uh, is Queer Brown Vegan. So, I mean, I, I don't really follow 
I, basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you're ever going to go onto one of these accounts, like if you ever see one of these posts, all right, as, as you're watching this right now, people watching this, if you see one of these posts and you're like, shit, is this, is this legit? Like, am I, oh my God, am I part of a movement that is, that is racist and sexist? Am I, am I, oh my God, if you freak out, right, just go and ask some vegans who are actually spending the majority of their lives fighting for animal rights, who go into slaughterhouses, go to expose farms, who go and do all this shit. Ask them, what do you think about this, before you go flipping the lid and freaking out? Because these people will tell you, like I'm telling you, no, this is obviously somebody who doesn't know what they're fucking talking about, who's trying to stir the pot for likes and shares, right? Ask some people who are actually on the ground fighting for the animals what is really going on, and you'll find a different answer. Or maybe you'll find the same answer, but like I'm gonna guess you'll probably find a different answer, and you'll find a different comment than than what that post is saying. Yeah, he's not even involved. Where are the animals? Like, what on earth? I would expect like a more posts if you're gonna put vegan in your name. Exactly. Like, I mean, listen, I I would say this just this one phrase. I think it's a good way to bring this uh, this problems, these issues to the surface and not be silent about them. But I think it's just going too far to say that uh, the whole vegan movement is that. Like, this is, I mean, it's just too much. It's good to talk about them, to find solutions for them. But, you know, as defining the, the, yeah, you know, the, it's like saying, because it's humans, uh, there are humans that are good humans and they're vegans and there are vegans that are not good humans, which is, you know, it's... It is what it is. We should speak about them and... Or as I put it, as I put it, the uh, piece of shit who I can happen <laughs> yeah, to be. <laughs> it's true though. There are many. There are many, unfortunately, and, and a lot of these oh, people yeah. would consider me one of those people. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, I don't really care actually. Fortunately, unfortunately, it, it is what it is. As you said, there, there are people like this. Yeah. Let's um, let's jump on to a new topic then. This topic's going to feel a little bit silly now actually after doing such a serious topic but it's in the description it's in the title so we're gonna we'll talk about it anyway um the uh the whole dating vegans topic and did you i don't know if you saw it and um, i'll pull it up maybe if you if you actually no we'll pull it up we'll just leave it there but basically there was like a relationship coach that did a uh a, in a relationship group that they were in they put out the question saying would you date a vegan or a non-drinker and all the answers were really funny they were saying shit like um that uh, like, no and like they had these horrible situations with vegans like that and it was all really like cringy in fact i'll try i may, maybe we'll bring it up and post it up for you i kind of want to get your like have you experienced this before either of you like where someone's been like found out you were vegan and, and has been like oh no fuck that i don't want to i don't want anything to do with you i don't date vegans have you ever had that before would you like to go oh i can't hear you man would you, would you like to go i, I can go all right, sure. Go ahead. I, I want. I think one of you is muted just now. I couldn't hear anything. No, go no, ahead. No. Go ahead. I, I was just waiting uh, for the vegan gays to take this on first, but it's all good. So uh, okay. I've. So listen. Usually, what I think about human uh, humans, what I hear about vegans, is that it's not usually about dating. It's like maybe when outreaching to someone, they usually say, "Oh, so if if a vegan, uh, you know." Let, no, let me phrase this differently. Every vegan that I had so far, or every vegan that I saw so far, if only he would speak like you did, like you know, as a human, yes, as a conversation that you have, you know, with anyone, a normal conversation. So, as as in dating, like, I think that, you know, it's maybe maybe they just they do the same thing again. They're stereotyping vegans. Like, dude, come on, man. Like what's that? I I also heard the com. I uh, sorry. I also read the comments about the ones that you had in the video. I'm like, I mean that's. Yeah. I, I understand joking around that, but I think that this yeah. is just finding ways to just cancel that. Which is I understand some. You know there are vegans that they, uh, they're more mm -hmm. aggressive. they in the in in terms of how they speak or how they phrase themselves or you know they're calling other people's names and stuff like that, which is then you don't really have a conversation, but I think it just, this is going a little too far, <laughs> if I may say so. I did not have that experience, uh, but I, sorry. No, 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 you carry on. I thought uh, you carry on. So I don't know, as, as in like, um, I usually, you know, I don't start with, hey, I'm vegan. Well, when I used to, to date back in the maybe two to three years ago, <laughs> but you know, I, uh, 
I think you no, know, it's it's probably taken to the extreme. At least in my experience, I I never had that. I cool. I think I I think I do because uh, people show interest and then they see like my account where I'm like named a vegan and I just do vegan content and I make memes and they're like I've had comments like oh you're really vegan and then they don't <laughs> they stop talking to me so uh, I think I think it does put people off they, like. They, Sorry, did, did they stop talking to you? Like, just because... I, 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 well, they they seem to have, like, you know, like, interest. Oh, okay. And then the interest mm -hmm. feigned as soon as they then yeah. looked at my actual, like, uh, account and, um, yeah, so, saw that it was, like, vegan. And then the interest just kind of dwindled. Yeah. So I think it, it I think it does put people off. Because um, mm, okay. <laughs> like, I... I it's a bit too shallow. Like, if so, like maybe it's a good way to like, let's say, you know, um, I don't know how to repel anything that's too, you know. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's a good way. Like, I've never. Thought it is, I think it's, it's good to put yourself out there properly and yeah. you know be unapologetic about what your stances are, because then you, yeah, you weed out who who won't like you. But I do think it is a repellent if you're someone who's quite involved. Like, I just live and breathe veganism. It's all I really do. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, I think right. that just does put people off because uh, they're, they're kind of happy with the idea of a plant-based person who they could probably, you know, eat their corpses with, um, uh, who might even just eat, you know, a corpse every once in a while. Um, but then when they realise, actually, no, you are vegan, <laughs> like, you're not, you, you care about animals, um, this person's probably going to make me feel a bit guilty. Um, then yeah. they changed. But I have had a few people who, like one of my um, girlfriends, like my ex-girlfriend, I asked her if she was vegan, but she was vegetarian at the time. And she went, I am now. And that, the rest is history. So <laughs> it can be like activism in a way when you're dating. So yeah, yeah. that's actually, I've actually, I've spoke to, okay, I've spoken to um, like, women about dating men and how men will pretend to be like not vegan but they'll pretend to be like oh yeah i love animals too and like they'll pretend to be plant-based to, to please please them and then they'll go and eat burgers or whatever and like and obviously as a vegan man i've experienced dating non-vegan women but i've never actually spoke to a woman about dating women so like what is that uh -huh. like are women are women more um what are you like dating women who have been non-vegan has it, would you say, I mean, have you dated both men and women or, or just women? Uh, like, you know, I've, like, I've, vegan? I've, I've dated a man when I was like 14. So no, I've never dated a vegan oh, okay. man or anything. Um, and I've never dated oh. a non-vegan since being vegan. So I, I haven't got a really good, like, um, oh, I, like okay. I haven't like, so the, 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 the first um, when I properly dated, yeah, she, um, she went vegan just like that and she still is vegan even though we're not together so um and okay. the other one i dated she she was vegan anyway and had been vegan for six years like me so um but i don't i think i i'm sure it probably be nearly the same uh with with women I, i'm not sure I, I i i feel like maybe guys would do it a bit more um but because right, okay. there are i think there are more women in the movement women seem a bit more susceptible to it. i don't know if it's because of the alpha thing or because of like i don't know it's seen as a compassionate thing and women are expected to be more compassionate i, I don't know if it's yeah, that's no. the case but um i think the women be more receptive to it but i wouldn't put it past them to be cheeky and um you know pretend oh actually i can tell you the person who uh, was vegetarian um she was vegetarian with her previous girlfriend and the minute her girlfriend broke up with her she went back to eating animals so it does it does yeah, happen I think, like <laughs> I think that's pretty, common. I think that's pretty common among i think that's pretty common among couples you know? um and i think i think the you know the example of like somebody faking it to try and get into bed with someone else i think I'm going to go ahead on the limb here and say that's more common in men because I think men in general are more desperate. <laughs> more desperate for women. You got to admit, it's all true. I'm sorry. Dudes get really thirsty and they can't, they'll do anything, anything. 
Um, and I think, I, I think I don't know. I'm just going ahead. I'm guessing, right? If you're in the comments <laughs> right now and you're a woman who's experienced this with uh, with a man or a man who's experienced this with a man, and, you know, who, whatever, I'll, I'd love to know if this, if I'm right with this guess. If, it is, if men are more desperate and therefore do this more often. Because I feel, I feel it in my gut that it's true, you know? I do feel it in my gut. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but I, think, I think the benefit is, is like you were both saying, is that all, oh, I think it was more like, um, I think it was more, uh, um, Vasilios, I think you were saying this more in that it's, it's a, a filter system, if anything, right? I don't know, I think you both said it. It's, it can be a filter, it can be a way of, of uh, weeding out the people that you don't actually want to waste any time with. But then again, if you are just out there trying to have something casual, that could suck because then if you're not, you know, if someone's just like really wants to go out and have fun, then it, it, it would be shitty if, if people kept rejecting them because they're vegan. But if you're looking for somebody you actually want to spend time with, then, then this is good if they, if they don't want to date you, right? So, Fuck them because <laughs> straight away, I, right? I, I, I would say like my experience, uh, you know, before I, I, I'm in the relationship two years now. So before that, because I'm almost five years vegan now. Um, so the past three years were like you know it, you don't really get uh, you know most women i'd like you know in my experience they did not have a problem you know because i was not really keen on you know going out with someone and she's gonna get something with meat or with dairy and i'm gonna you know take something without but anything you know anything casual was just okay with that you know i always you know ask politely and stuff like that but i and they, ne I never had an experience, you know, like, oh, but you're vegan, like, at least in my, you know, at least in my experience, I don't know. Um, I've, I've heard quite a few stories, though, about men saying, oh, yes, I'm not going to eat meat, I love animals, I have, you know, I, you know, I, I can, you know, maybe confirm that, but, you know, this is <laughs> my experience as well, doesn't, doesn't say anything, because I've heard the stories, I don't know how true they were. Yeah, man, I'm with you. I mean, I, I actually haven't shared my experience here either. I think, like, for my, I, I definitely, I don't think anyone's ever told me I won't date you because you're a vegan. But I think people have broken it off with me for that reason, or like they've, or they've said I don't think it's working for that reason. Um, because they, like, there's only obviously now I'm with I'm with Annie who is vegan, so there's there's absolutely no there's nothing no problem all here. And, and I can see that that's going to be for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I don't see that changing. Um, so that's awesome. But, but like in the past, I think that the two things that I've been upfront with people about, right? Two things that, that I won't stand for or, or that I do stand for, sorry, but I won't stand for in a partner, um, like veganism and smoking. <laughs> There's two things. And it's like, if you, if you want to stuff your face with dead animals and smoke, then this ain't going to work. Simple as that. I'm, I'm upfront with it because it's like there's no point beating around the bush. There's no point lying to you. Um, if you're a vegan but you smoke, it's not going to work. I can't handle it. Um, if you if you don't smoke but you stuff your face with dead bodies, it's not going to work. Like it's simple as that. Um, and I think I guess uh, again for anyone watching, if you're having some bad experiences or you think that I'm being too harsh here, you think this is the way it pushes people away. Look, you got to remember that like, there are a shitload of people in the world, and you do not have to settle people that don't fit with what you want you really don't um i see a few people saying like oh there's only so people in my area blah 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 stuff like that look it's bullshit don't stop stop you're telling yourself this and it's really negative it's pessimistic there are shit loads of people in the world and i promise you that you don't need to make do with someone who doesn't match what you want look for in someone else you really don't patient it'll happen no it if anything, it's like it's kind of cruel if you know that you're getting, um, you know, obviously it's, some things can be subject to changing. You can change these things in people. But at the same time, you know, they'd be better suited to somebody who likes doing the things they like doing. And you'd be better suited and happier and a better partner to someone who, you know, you get on better with and your core values are in alignment. So it, it's you're not doing anyone any harm by just being, you know, setting your boundaries clearly and saying this is what I want, you know, in a partner, you've got no obligation to be with anyone. So, you know, you're not doing anything harmful by just being like that. I don't think it's harsh at all. Awesome. No, I totally agree. And uh, I'm going to switch the topic now, unless you've got anything else to say on this. 
Are uh, you guys you are going to move on? Uh, just one last thing, one last thing. I would say that maybe you're cutting yourself short by you know because it usually uh, it doesn't work like in the long run that the person either you know changes and you know he realizes what's happening towards veganism and towards the animals and or he or you just have a continuous uh, you know uh, situation of fighting and being mad about or just suppressing any emotion you have so it, it just doesn't work i don't know for me it would never work <laughs> any totally but I, yeah I, yeah be honest with yourself be honest with other people it's pretty much it and if you're already in a relationship with somebody to say they're already in a relationship it's still all about honesty it really is. You've got to be totally honest with them. And yeah, you've got to try and work through it. And I know it's going to be really, really horrible and hard. And I know uh, Grumpy Vegan Granddad is going through that right now and he's doing his best. And that's all you can do. You can only do your best. Be honest with them. Open up, open your heart to them. Tell them how it makes you feel. Show them what's going on in your mind. And, and that's all you can really do. That, that's, you can't force them to do anything. You shouldn't force them to do anything. And you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself for trying to stand for something that is, that is right. You know, um, Don't let them shame you. If they try to, but um, we're going to move on to another topic, and it's kind of linked with the uh, smoking example that I just gave. Then I said smoking is one of the things that I absolutely hate, and this is a, I, I yeah, I'll give you guys a warning. It's not a particularly nice thing we're about to show and discuss, but I, I want to discuss it because I don't think it gets discussed enough. So I'll show you this now and put it up on the screen. So this is about animal experimentation. So again, there's, there's some images in here that aren't very nice, but I want to discuss it with you guys. I think it's something that's largely ignored by the animal rights and vegan communities. Uh, they've been doing vaping experiments on pregnant mice. Um, vaping, if those of you that don't know what vaping is, it's like cigarettes, but with the, uh, the electric cigarettes. So yeah, this has been happening. Um, the National Institute of Health Apparently, is they've been awarded like 2.3 million dollars, 1.76 million pounds to do research on pregnant mice see it risks children. See if it increases the risk of children that have asthma vaping, right? And they've been doing this horrible shit to them by putting them in these inhalation tubes, which you can see now, where they force them to inhale the uh, the vape smoke, right? Um, the reason I brought this up. Of course, it's because this is fucking horrific. Uh, I'll leave that on just for a few more seconds, just like so you can see what I'm talking about. This is mice, pregnant mice in inhalation tubes being forced to inhale vape smoke. Um, now, I, I know for sure that there are many, many vegans out there who are uh, like vaping, smoking, you know, and don't either don't know or don't consider or don't want to consider that smoking, like most cigarette, tobacco, and now obviously you can see vaping equipment. Um, it's been tested on or is being tested on animals right now. And, and, and I will like what you guys think about this. And, and why do you think that vegans or, or the animal rights movement in general, the vegan movement in general, vegan community, whatever you want to call it, why do you think this is often ignored and, and, and many vegans will, you know, draw a line at stuff like smoking, for example, they'll just be like, yeah, you know, smoking, and they just don't look into that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll draw the line there and, and, and not do the, do the research, or, or, they'll, or if I bring this up, they'll be like, yeah, but, you know, uh, uh, and not actually stop uh, the vaping, or, or you know, what, what, do you think, what do you think is the reason for that? I think the reason probably is because, well, a lot of them are going to be doing it themselves, and because of the the addictive nature of it, that's probably why. Because it's it contains an addictive substance, so I think people may be scared to say um, to people who already have it, like difficulty giving stuff up um, without looking quite pushy or preachy. That's maybe why people like avoid doing it because it is, you know, like there's nothing really about animal products that's addictive except like the minute morphine element to uh, cheese right but apart from that there's nothing like there's nothing inherently addictive about it so maybe that's why people sway away from it because it's again it's like what well, like, like nicotine's like the most addictive substance one of the most addictive substances at least so i think it's mm -hmm. like a touchy topic for like anyone to even approach because it almost feels like it's out of people's control in people's minds um right so that's probably why people avoid it um or they do it themselves and they know it's a problem 
and obviously if you're dealing with someone that you know someone's got like a, a coke problem you know they'll be like i don't have a problem it's fine it's not bad for you it's you know all these things so I, I think maybe it's a bit of denial mixed with the discomfort of knowing it's an addictive substance. But yeah. yeah. What do you think, man? Um, so I, I was, I was one of those vegans that were smoking. By the way, if we were to meet a year ago, I would be. Uh, and in Greece, like they say, I don't think. Uh, so far, I've seen anything that it's written that there are two companies, if I'm not mistaken, that they do not test on animals but i know and i found out that nicotine as a substance is being tested on animals so i would i would go ahead and say like it's really addictive like it's not just the nicotine as nicotine it's just uh the the whole process of it like you are in a nice place and then but you have to be in a nice place and you should be smoking or you're eating something and after you eat something you get or you have to smoke so i it, it took me a while like it's it, you know it, it it takes uh it takes a while to realize what's happening and it really takes a while to realize like that you either do something about this or you don't do you know something about this and you know it's maybe it's a gradually i started you know counting days like this is day one day two day three and after a while it just you know stopped counting days and there were moments like especially when you have uh, you're feeling you know a little bit low or you're feeling you know that uh, i mean it's just one cigarette like what's gonna change uh but you know you have to say no to all of those moments and maybe a year after that you still have this you know this is it's not like a super huge urge that you cannot control but you have to have yeah. that, uh, you know clarity to say no to that to whatever that addictive yeah. substance is and like i think that everyone is well just, just to, to you know um i'm thinking i'm going too far ahead but i think that pretty much everyone knows how addictive those things are regardless like any type of drug so so to say that like uh, there aren't any consequences, no matter what. Like they tested on mice, they used to be, you know, testing that on mice, and they, unless you know the the um, the supply of that, sorry, the demand of that goes, you know, to zero, they're still probably going to yeah. do this, as they, you know, test, you know, pharmaceuticals on animals, which is another t t totally different topic. But like this is totally, you know, um, let's say you don't have a to have nicotine to survive. Regardless, the, you know, mm -hmm. Instead, it's the opposite. You don't need any nicotine or, you know, or tar or whatever. So, which is, I understand, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying as I'm, you know, better than anyone, but it's, you have to realize what well, you are. Meant. You totally are, man. You're like totally on your moral high horse right now. You're just making everyone <laughs> feel so guilty. Well, I, I, I apologize, but... I, I do not no, feel it's all <laughs> 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 No, but it's it's I totally get you. I, yeah, I mean where I stand on this, I agree with both of you. I understand I understand both of you at least and I agree with both of you on some on, on most of what you said. I I think for me, I mean with my I have like a, a vendetta against smoke. Like literally if you if you were to ask me what is the like you know, my number one thing is the animals and veganism and animal rights. If you ask me what my number two thing is, it would be smoking. I fucking hate it. I, with a vengeance like it's it's i think it's the most disgusting thing um i can't stand it so when i find out that that these companies are, are testing uh smoking uh equipment and smoking diff different things that go into smoking on on mice like this i'm just pissed off because on my look like as vegans would it not make sense that we just, we just you know say like yeah the smoking is being tested on animals we don't need to do it why don't we just cut it out it, it gives you it gives you fucking cancer like all, all you need to stop smoking like not only is it fucking new york but it's also killing animals uh what, what more do you what could you possibly need to motivate you right and um also uh, roger yates um made a comment and i'm interested in just sharing this because this is i don't know if you guys oh, I'm, I'm sure you do ellie but uh Vesely, i'm not sure if you know who roger yates is but he's a relative a pretty well-known activist uh, been in the movement for a very very long time and he says that um, the movement used to be focused on vivisection uh, that's animal testing. Um, large marches in the 1980s, uh, 12,000 in Britain, and in the USA in 1990, possibly 75,000 people went out on march uh, against animal testing, uh, vivisection, which which actually doesn't surprise me, because I think 
I think nine out of 10 people that you speak to and say they're against animal testing for like cosmetics and, and uh, you know, and, and cigarettes and shit like that. So whether they're vegan or not, I'd say it would be pretty easy to get like tens of thousands of people out to protest. So if you, if you had that, not easy, but you know, get, you get what I'm saying. It would be easier than getting them out to protest for, uh, against, um, Baker, for example. That would be much more difficult, right? But it would be, it would be a much easier task. So it doesn't surprise me. But do you think there's a, there's a, an argument to maybe, um, refocus? Because I feel like it, it has lost the focus. I mean, when I was young in England, um, when I went out and protested with my mum, which not many times, but it happened, it was always for vivisection. It was always about animal testing. It's almost like the only things you could protest for, the only things that were going on were animal testing and hunt stabbing. Um, that's it. There, there were no protests at slaughterhouses. There were no protests like, there were very, very few of these kind of street stalls where you would give some flyers out about veganism. There were people doing that, but the main protests, they were about animal testing and uh, they were hunt stabbing, things that most of the public could get behind. So do you think there's a, there's some sense in that to get so for something that the public would really get behind and uh, spend more time on that or do you think what we're doing now is is the right way you know where we're focusing on veganism and, and the ethics as a whole you know the whole thing all in one well i think with the direct action if you focus on the specific thing that's happening then i think you can be way more effective and you know because because of these um you know uh, vivisection focuses there have been like um it was originally the Dr. Hadwin Trust, but now it's called Animal Free Research UK or something like that, um, who specialize in, you know, trying to um, not use vivisection. But I, I think, yeah, because like my the first times I started like dealing with seeing really bad things that were happening to animals was vivisection was, you know, the, the uh, moon bears and what we do to them uh, in Vietnam. Um, and you, it makes you question, like, God, if we're doing these horrible things, because vivisection is one of, like, the darkest, most terrifying concepts, you know, for an animal, um, then what else are we doing? And that led me to become vegan, because it's like we have no mercy for them. And because people, um, a lot of the time they go, okay, well, not on cosmetics, because we don't really need cosmetics, and not on, on smoking, because we already know it's bad. But yes, on like life saving, you know, s surgeries, like do it on human research. Um, and it's like, well, actually, when you look into vivisection and you understand it, it seems from what the scientists say that it's actually quite harmful to even use animals in the first place. And it's not, people don't know these like seemingly simple things that the reason they use animals is because it's a cheap, a way to collect a lot of data and from my understanding scientists when they do studies they are paid per uh, the quantity of the, of the study not the quality of the study so if they can conduct mice studies even though they're not really applicable to humans it's going to have to go to human trials anyway they, they've got their money um, so it's, it's these things that are really important to people to understand but when you tell them it's like news to them so I think we've lost the we've we've lost the understanding we had of vivisection, and people do need to know that animal testing. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but from my understanding, it's just not needed, and it's actually it can be quite detrimental and it leads to false uh, outcomes. So, yeah. So yes, any any comment? What do you think about yeah. this? So, uh, first of all, I would go ahead and say that I was against smoking as well. I did not know what happened, you know, you know, when I was little, I literally remember that we had argues about, uh, arguments about that, uh, fights even, um, like I, I've seen, I, you know, have not, let's say put it to the test. What's, but I, we have some, you know, similarities with mice, you know, I'm no expert or anything, but I do not really think that, you know, it's. I don't know. It's, it's we're not the same. We're not the same. And if it if if it's to go to you know human testing after all, like why do we need that? We do know that nicotine is uh, you know and tar and you know anything in the cigarette is harmful. So what? I mean, at least why do we continue to do that for something that we already know? Like what changes? So I would say like, uh, yeah, it's it's an industry that. 
it's even you know I would say scarier uh, because some people they claim that but it's about the so you know the um, the survival of the human race or if it's something but that it's essential so I think it's it's really you know it's deep down I would say we do not need that as far as you know of no expert as I am um, also I would I would like to say that you know, as, as vegans, you know, that they smoke and they know, like, pretty much everyone knows that this is bad. Like, we, we, we're past that. And I think if you're already a vegan, you have the awareness to see and look what's good for you. you know, it's, 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 in the end, like, it's a move that you can change for you. You know, so this is, this is really important in the end. The reason that it happens, and I think this is the same kind of line of reasoning when it comes to crop deaths, though, like the worst anti-vegan nonsense I've heard in my life. But you know how animals, like, they, they are being killed, and it seems like we can't um, actually stop that from happening. But it's it's just like, it's like, um, it's the legal requirement, as far as I'm aware. I think, oh, I think Roger Yates has said it, that, yeah, that you need to uh, legally test something on an animal before it goes to human trials but if you look up like animal free research uk they show these alternatives that uh, you can use like they can generate skin grafts so they can directly test it on a skin without an actual human participant there are these things that exist but one um you know like in the case of crop deaths that we, we don't value animals enough to consider them in a practice so that hasn't happened so the law hasn't changed and two um because uh, the, the money needs to be invested in these alternatives so you would need to change the law that's what would need to happen you're right there david Guys, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but I've yes. just lost all my audio. So oh. if you want to continue on this topic for a second while I <laughs> fix this, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. So um, I, I wanted to say something yeah. regarding like, yeah, because it said like, is it good, you know, to march for things like vivisection or uh, things, you know, regarding uh, animals? And I think it's a really, really important uh, because, you know, some people, they need, you know, to find a way to, let's say, be led. To, to veganism, to in a way to desensitize themselves. I had to, uh, you know, uh, adopt a dog and say, like, I have a dog. How can I be eating, you know, animals similar to dogs when there is no need? And like, okay, I'm, I'm a vegan now. So I think that, like anything, you know, there is only so much time in the end. But I think there are, you know, uh, there are ways to get someone to realize what we do to animals. It's it's something we should, you know, be focusing on and you know, as I said before, like veganism is the bare minimum. We we can you know, mm -hmm. just start from that and see um, what we can do from that. Also, like it's really important to like some people that are really passionate about fur, some others that are really passionate about fish, uh, or uh, let's say I don't know uh, pigs or goats or you know because some others like about about vivisection. So it's really. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's a good thing to have people that are passionate about one thing. They know a lot more about that thing, and they can, you know, they can provide chains in a way. Yeah, if you get into the thing that they're passionate about, then it may follow that that they then make the decision and understand that they they need to be consistent. You just have to hit them. You have to find um, there's a term appealing to someone's elephant, where you find they've got like a logical side and an emotional side and um their emotion they're fully emotional so you've got to just appeal to their emotion essentially and find that thing that they're that really um makes them in tune with their emotions and use that to uh, get them to connect with your message so david are we getting any closer we're having a problem yeah i'm back yeah hey, so my, okay. my I'll explain what's going on really quickly. It's kind of boring for anyone who doesn't get it. But basically, these things have a microphone in them, right? And I also have a microphone here, but my phone won't let me choose this microphone without disabling these headphones. So I either uh, have to have everything here or, or, or nothing. That's basically what's going on right now, which is fucking stupid. So I, am I, is my audio okay or is it really bad? Some people were saying it's bad. It's, like, it's all right. 
It's all right, but when okay. I listened to it on YouTube, it sounded a little bit worse. Oh, so I think we're shit. hearing it maybe a bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. Nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. I guess I'll right. add a You need some new headphones. You need some new headphones. Oh, the, headphones fine. the microphone on the headphones is shit. The headphones are great. I think I've got my, my external mic is set up. So maybe thing is if I take, okay, if, if forget it. It's all right. We'll go as we are. Right? I'll figure it, figure it out for the next live stream. It's all right. It's all good. But, but I'll just share my thoughts on this as well about um, the animal thing. And, and yeah, I think what Vasily has just said about how, or about how there shouldn't be a problem if some people have some areas that they're extremely, uh, you know, educated in, let's say, or passionate about, then that, that's great that, 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 sh that could be something that, like, um, we, uh, we can split down into, into issues that we are more knowledgeable on and more passionate about. I guess my point was that, is there an argument to say that maybe more, uh, more vegans, more animal rights activists, uh, is there an argument for them to put more of a focus on animal testing because it seems like there's less of a focus on it, especially right now, and there's more, more of a focus on animal agriculture in general um, and not necessarily on animal testing. So that kind of was the question. I, I know that, or I assume that Roger Yates would, would be saying yes. And I think, I think most of the, let's say, old school OG activists would say yes because i think that's what they uh, were focusing on and they found some success in that and they found that you know they could get thousands of people out onto the streets and and uh protest about this uh and get thousands of signatures and thousands of you know lots of support basically so maybe we could maybe that could be something to you know to consider uh to bring back a focus on that and to see how that would go in 2020 right because um people people nowadays are more aware of veganism they're more aware of what's going on in animal culture and it's it's that's difficult for them to accept but it's going to be very easy for people to accept that you know animal testing is 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 fucking evil i think i think most i think nine out of ten people vegan or not are going to say oh yeah totally that's evil so maybe this this is a good um i don't know what you call it gateway maybe entrance into into this world uh, maybe we should be putting more, putting more time into it. And I, I've had this discussion with other people too. I've, I've, I've thought about it myself. Like, how would I implement this? Because, you know, I think, I think it's, uh, it could be. Obviously, those animals need to be defended. Don't get me wrong. It's not, it's not just a tactic. It is do it for reasons, but it, it is also a good tactic. It is also a good way to, yeah, to get people uh, interested, let's say, involved. Um, aware it could be a gateway for that mm -hmm. and as michelle's saying like rodents are very clever genetically close to humans so i think it's a good way if you get like a small animal who like a lot of the time people think small means unintelligent um they conflate that with you know not being smart enough to understand the world around you and perceive and have emotions but if you could you know uh, use them and as an example of actually no we've underestimated the intelligence of these beings you know and and get them to empathize more with an animal that's not like them then it, it might help them make the connection with other animals that we've deemed stupid like any bird like a chicken um so it'd just be a brilliant a brilliant kind of way to you know, bleed in the, the rest of the animals. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Cool. Are you, are you anything to add here, man? Maybe we can close off and, and yeah, I, move I on to a new topic. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. But also like, you know, we, a good thing like uh, that came to my mind is like maybe having a protest for that and then maybe go watch Dominion or something. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, just you know, a way to correlate things, you know, guys, you're interested about this, but, what about that? So it's it's it always you know it's a starting point to influence people in a good way for the you know for the good of animals. So we just really agree with here. Definitely, definitely, man. So did you did you both watch the uh, the video about like, like that poultry that poultry website put up with the uh, the um, what's the name director of communications or vice president of communications from the Animal Agriculture Alliance? You see that on my five minute Friday. Did you catch that? Yes. I can go through. I, th I think so. I think it. so. But if you could refresh, hmm. it yeah, wasn't it. Switch. She was. It wasn't it the one where she was saying that oh you can't reason with vegans 
or something. Yeah. So let me let, yeah. me, let me pull. Actually, I'm not going to pull it up. I'm going to leave. Uh, I'll I'll pull up the uh, picture just so people can see. I don't know. Some kind of this gives them some collection. I'll pull up a little little screen of this real quick, uh, just to show what I'm talking about. So basically, I want to talk about this a little bit more. So this this woman here. Oh yes. Her uh, name's Hannah Tom Thompson Weeman. Uh, she works with the Animal and Cultural Alliance. She's done a few different articles about uh, animal rights activists and vegans, and uh, she made this video with this um, What Poultry, the, the, this website, What Poultry. Uh, the cool thing is, well, not cool, uh, but I guess kind of funny in a way, um, thing is that I cannot see this because I registered with that website. So I'm not an official uh, member of this website. It's free, but um, it's kind of weird, right? And I think they're going to send me newsletters and stuff, which is great because I can obviously keep up to date with what's going on. Um, yeah, so, so this, this anyway, this video, just to uh, give you an idea of what it said, I'm not going to play it. You can check it out on my 5 Minute Friday if you want. But the video, she was basically answering the question of um, what, what do retailers need to do when they are getting faced with animal rights activists, right? Pressure from animal rights activists. This is happening to retailers, it's happening to um, just businesses that are being supplied to by the animal agriculture industry. And she's been asked this question as the vice president of communications, like, what do you think we should do? And her advice was uh, basically ignore the activists and do what is right for your consumers and what is right for your business, right? That was her advice. Um, I know what I think about this, and I find, I find it, to be honest with you, I find it desperate, and I'm, I want to talk about it again because it, it's fucking hilarious. Like, imagine, imagine that being your advice. Like, I don't know, there were two pieces of advice. Ignore them, and the second piece of advice, or the, whatever order it was, was that they should speak to the farmers for the real truth. <laughs> like, these activists... They're, 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 they're lying. It's, it's all bullshit. Yeah. Speak to the farmers. Uh, they know what's best. You know, they know what's true. It's the most desperate shit I think I've, I've ever seen from these guys. Um, so uh, what, are your, what are your initial reactions to that? that? The fact that they're making these kinds of videos, like these in, the industry leaders are making kind of videos to tell retailers to ignore us. What do you think? It's just straight out manipulation and it's so clear to see and they think they can get away with it because they manipulate people into eating animals and being okay with it so they really do think that the consumer's stupid and it's like well no the consumer's just not informed and easily manipulated that's that's the difference so i uh, i just yeah I, I i think if 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 what we were saying was so bad what they would respond is listen to them if you want but like do your actual research and then you'll come to find that oh it's you know, what they're saying is false you know it, if we didn't have a point they wouldn't want us to uh, be steered clear of really would they so it's clear they're scared their jimmies are being rustled and yeah it's it's kind of funny it's almost funny yeah definitely also, also five with... yeah Go ahead, man. Even if they, you know, if they wouldn't care, they wouldn't address that. Like, let's start with that. Like, they would just, I mean, what vegan activists? So, I mean, what happened? Or, you know, animal rights activists. So, I mean, it's, um, you, you can see change pretty much everywhere. Like, you can see, you know, um, supermarkets, like, especially here in Greece, they just have products they never had before, like, three years ago, two years ago. You can see a change. Um, and you cannot really measure that. I, I really doubt that anyone actually measures the change that's happening. But pretty much, like, it's, you know, it, in my opinion, it's inevitable. The thing is, how long will it take? And they cannot really do anything about that. Like, ignore them. Uh, let's say they wouldn't ignore, ignore us or, you know, they wouldn't ignore the, the activists. Like, what would they do? Like, I don't know. I, I just... If you know, just try to get in my mind like okay she she would give another type of advice what would that be what would you know what would they do well the thing is if is, is if she if they really had the best interests of the animals in the mind as they claim to have right they're like we just we just want the best for these animals we're just we're all about the welfare we're, we're doing our best it's just these activists they just they just want to finish us they just hate our business they just hate us like yeah yeah, that's exactly what's going on. We've just got this irrational hate for you. It's nothing to do with the fact that you fucking exploit animals' bodies for money. But anyway, the point, she could have said something like, oh, um, yeah, listen, because maybe they've exposed 
I don't know, a really bad business, but she could have said like, but you know, come to us because we can find you one that is better, uh, you know, higher welfare, like, you know, something like that. Some practical advice for them rather than just ignore them, even though they might be right. You know, she's not accepted any responsibility for the fact that maybe these activists have uncovered one of the most disgusting farms in the country of wherever this is happening. And they've told these retailers that, hey, look, look what's going on here. You know, it would have been a way more mature response from this woman, this direct director or whatever, for her to say they might have a point. Right. Maybe this the this farm wasn't up to the welfare standards. I know we don't agree, but this is the way that she could have handled it in a way that wouldn't have had me pulling her up onto a video and ripping the shit out of her. You know what I mean? Because like, what she actually did was just like, oh, no, no, no. Like, they, they, they're definitely wrong. Like, I don't know what they're talking about in this specific case, but they're definitely wrong. Just ignore them. It's like, how could you be so short sighted, arrogant, you know, to, to believe that every single farm every single slaughterhouse fits your good standards. And I'm doing that because obviously we know that's not true, but you see my point here, right? I'm trying to talk as in, in her world, yeah, I what understand. she should or could I understand. That would make but, more sense. But, but like, I'm, I just want to, because you can, you can just really say that this is a leap service. Like this is, yeah, but the reality is that. So, you know, how can you say that this is, this is not the worst of the worst or and there is better or, you know, lead your, uh, you know, to another, say another supplier. Uh, what we I say here, like, is how, like, in the long run, like, do you think actually they are going to have to implement higher welfare standards and, you know, avoid this? Or is it something that they would ignore? This is speculation, but do, what do you think is going to happen? Like, would it continue, like, you know, ignoring and, uh, you know, exposing? Or would it, would it actually change to a, a better situation when there will still be... There will still be that activism and you know videos and stuff about that. Uh, if you, if we, what do you mean? If they keep it, if they keep, if they actually do ignore us, if the retailers yeah, yeah, actually yeah. ignore the act, if, right, if they don't then, change, then all yeah. that's gonna, yeah, all that's going to happen is I said this in the video, and I, I stand by this: is that yes, most people are hypocrites, right? Don't get me wrong; I'm, most people are hypocrites, but. They, they are starting to wake up a little bit more to things that in the past they would have done without even thinking, right? They're seeing more things. That, they're opening YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Twitter, and they're seeing, holy shit, like, this animal having a throat slit. Oh, holy shit. Well, look at this. Oh, my God, look at this vegan burger. Like, oh, my God, the protest. Like, oh, my God. They, they're getting all of this information, right? So they're becoming more aware of these things. They're, they're becoming more sensitive to these things. So if one of these companies... Uh, some you know we see something like activists expose a farm that's horrific right there's there's, a, there's something happening and they listen to the advice of the animal agriculture alliance and they ignore the activists so the activists go public and state how they got ignored by that retailer they're going to have to change because the public is fucking crazy and yes they're hypocrites don't get me wrong the public are hypocrites don't, they're complete hypocrites but they are very powerful in this case because Although they're hypocrites and, and, you know, there is the high welfare doesn't make much of a fucking difference when the animals go to the same slaughterhouse, them, them preaching and pushing for higher welfare is going to cause problems for those retailers and they're going to have to listen to activists and have to start listening to activists. So I think this, this is what this Hannah has completely overlooked, that the public will pressure for high welfare if the retailer doesn't respond to the activists and do think about it themselves the public will get behind that right that's why i think she's completely missed yeah <laughs> any thoughts yeah. have, I just, have i rambled on for too long on that no 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 <laughs> that, that's good that's good i i just wanted to see you know what was the what would be the outcome of that which is it, would, it makes sense it makes sense yeah 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 any thoughts ellie I completely agree. You stole the words out of my mouth. I have nothing further to add on that. I and mean, when she's slime ball, <laughs> naughty, naughty, cheeky, Fair cheeky. Fair enough. And I, I, it's just, yeah, as I said in my, my video, I, I make me very happy to see the desperation from them that they're telling people to don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. I know they look scared. It's, it's, it's they look scared. It's funny. Makes me very they happy. They always look scared. They yeah. do. They do. When they, when they talk about activists, they, they really always seem to be kind of like 
I don't know, it's like overcompensating. It's like the saying that, um, I don't know what movie it comes from, it's like an old movie. It's like the lady don't protest too much. It's like when you yeah. are protesting so much that you are not scared, you're most likely terrified of, of what's going on. Oh, we're so confident, guys. Don't worry, these activists aren't going to get us. And then it's like, you just, you're so overcompensating for the fact that you're terrified of, of them finding all of this shit and exposing it to the public over and over again, yeah. I mentioned this in my uh, most recent video where about like dairy farmers specifically like I, I have TikTok I don't know if you have it but like I can guarantee the farmer trolls in there are always dairy farmers like they seem the most nervous yeah. you've got that February dairy thing that happened and that was coined by a really desperate farmer who again was someone who's like ignore you know like she was all like oh have good discourse with the vegans don't block them and stuff but then she ended up saying block and ignore like it's just it looks yeah. so different first it is it's hilarious i thrive off it <laughs> exactly um right here by i just added i in now hey um, roger can you hear me yeah can Hello? you hear me yeah good. hey Hello. Roger. Uh, yes, yeah, I, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> I wanted to add to what you just said. I think, in the sense that um, it's interesting, you know, this idea about whether we need to get involved with welfare or or um, or respond to, you know, what the welfare kind of people are talking about. I think I think that's what you were talking about. I was doing a few other things at the time. There's a sociologist called Richard Gale, and his perspective is really interesting. Uh, for example, when we think about social movements and their counter movements. We usually think about that kind of relationship between those two things. But Richard Gale talked about the relationship between social movements, counter movements and the state or the state agencies. And so basically this paper shows that um, animal rights people should never or don't need ever to get involved with because by promulgating an animal rights case, you end up with welfare anyway. So the way this works is as you were saying david about the public pressurizing it, it works another way that if if you create what i tend to call social turbulence then that tends to mean that say you're outside a circus you're saying you know we're opposed to animal use this is a form of animal rights violations we're opposed to that they they tend to translate that to welfare because they can't deal with the animal rights arguments because that would mean abolition for them and if there's enough social turbulence especially if it gets into the media, then the minister in charge of regulating all that will get onto the circus and say, look, I, I'm getting a lot of shit here. Do something about it. And of course, the only thing they can do is improve the welfare. So then they improve the welfare. And then the minister then says, well, you know, we've, we've looked into this. We've talked to the industry and, and they've created more welfare regulations, blah, 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 to, to try to kind of, if you like, get everybody off their back. And that is created by people making animal rights points. And so you, you don't need really to get involved with animal welfare. So I, th I think that kind of goes towards some of the things that you were saying. So hopefully that is the case. But if, if not, I apologize. Yeah. No, it's totally. No. Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of similar to something I say when people tell me, uh, I've had the people ask me, why don't you advocate for someone or vegetarian? Uh, and, you know, as a step, like they asked me that, like, what, what, what's so wrong with that? And I kind of say something very similar to what you've just said. I say, like, if you if you advocate for veganism, most people are going to go vegetarian before they go vegan. I don't want them to, but they'll do it anyway, because they see like, oh, veganism is just this big thing that's going to be so hard. So I'll go veggie first and then I'll be vegan later. Most mm -hmm. people, I say majority of us even, like I'm included. That's kind of what we did. That was the journey we went down. Um, but but advocating for vegetarianism is not going to give us. They're not going to provide that solution. It's actually going to make people probably just reduce. And advocating for someone to reduce is going to make them do nothing. So we advocate for veganism because it's the right thing to do. Obviously, by the animals, it's the right thing to advocate yeah, for abolition. But also, because, yeah, it's the uh, most honest honest thing to do. I mean, it used to be it used yeah. to be. The, I mean, like people come up to our stall in Dublin. And they kind of say, they announce the fact that they're vegetarian and they're kind of looking for validation. They want us to say, oh, that's great, you know, and this kind of stuff. And I always say, well, well there's a cure for that. And, um, and kind of make a bit of a joke out of it. But it used to be that the movement used to say, go vegan first. 
uh, sorry, go vegetarian first as a kind of stepping stone Rega regarding vegetarianism as some kind of gateway to veganism. Whereas now it's more like be as vegan as possible and, um, and, and kick out the vegetarian stage. Because, I, I mean, I've known over the years, I've known lots of people get stuck in, in vegetarianism. And, you know, you see it on social media all the time, people saying, you know, I really regret the amount of years that I spent as a vegetarian because they thought they were doing enough and then they found out something else and then they realized that they should have, they should have gone vegan in, in the first place. So it is very important for vegans to always maintain the focus on veganism and nothing else. If there's people who want to do lesser than vegan stuff, well, let them do that. Let the reducitarians do that. You know, if people want to, you know, promote vegetarianism, then, then let the vegetarians do that. The, the vegans should stick with what we believe. It's the honest thing to do. And we're telling, we're telling people our position, you know, and there's no point in trying to be a politician about it and second guess people. We, we just yeah. need to tell them what the consistent moral position is from an our rights point of view, a vegan point of view, and stick to that and see how it goes and let them decide if they want to go on a journey, you know, because again, you know, people come up and they, they kind of go, well, look, um, I'm on a journey and veganism is a destination. Well, that's not too bad in the sense that they know at least where they're going. And then you can kind of trust them to kind of move towards getting there. And of course, your job at that stage then is to create a pathway for them or to help them if, if you know, if they think oh, I'm struggling with this, that or the other, and you can maybe help. But, you know, so long as they know the destination, um, that's good. You know, some people think, well, you know, I mean, it's interesting, really. It's like until about four or five years ago, all the big groups, Animal Aids and the Vivas and all this kind of stuff, they were frightened of the word vegan because vegan was seen as a, as a scare word in those days. Whereas now they've kind of been kicked, you know, screaming into the vegan community now. And they'll now promote veganism in a, in a relatively consistent way now. You know, they used to put out these very graphic pictures and, and, and videos and the, and then you say go veg at the end because they were scared of veganism. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah. they thought, you know, or veggie or even, anybody remember that thing about vegan? V-E-G. Oh, Ashton. the egg thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I really hate that. I always have. <laughs> But, yeah, we were talking. We were talking about this earlier because I was saying about how, like, if you don't, if you're, you don't have conviction and you don't set an end goal or a, like a bare minimum, at least high standard, then nobody's going to respect that position enough to actually at least come towards it. So, you, you know, if you know that you've got this end goal and you, you, you are someone with the ability to argue for that, to stick by that, to practice it yourself, then why waver on that? Like, why? If, well, if it's a good some, some people think you've got to do the kind of foot in the door type thing, like give people a small thing to do and then lead lead them through that. And it, I mean, it's interesting because you've got a lot of reducitarians, you've got the Nick Coonies of the world, and you've got the Tobias Leonards, the vegan strategists, oh, and, and, all, and, all, and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and they, will, they will do this kind of gradual kind of stuff, you know, Melanie Joy in this kind of camp. Whereas someone like Casey Taft would say, no, actually, there's a lot of psychological research where the big ask is what's necessary. You, you tell them what your end goal is and you're just honest with people. Uh, rather, rather than trying to kind of just jimmy them along for a while. I mean, Leonard's position is, well, you kind of try and get them vaguely vegan for, for 20 years and, and then a bit more vegan and this kind of stuff. Well, you know, the research doesn't even back that up. You, you can actually just tell them the truth and let them move towards it. And that seems to be the best thing. You know, also, it's the most honest thing for us to do, isn't it? We're, we're vegan activists. We stand for veganism. We're opposed to rights violations. So we say that. You know, what's wrong with telling the yeah. truth? It needs to be a strong message. And, and last week, I think, I, I think you even mentioned this, or maybe it was the week before, about saying that, uh, if anything, we, should, we could even be advocating for people to become activists because then they would hold being an activist final goal and who knows, maybe that would actually encourage them to become vegan much quicker. Right? Because when we say go vegan, as I said earlier, most people are going to go vegetarian first. If we say, okay, you should come out on the streets with me, maybe they'll say, okay, let me go vegan first, all right? <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that yet. And this could actually be like a solid tactic, a solid strategy to, you know, to 
and also it's sort of the right thing. We're encouraging people to be active. I think that's it's, it's a good thing. I agree thing, with that, David. Right? The, the, the real problem there is that sometimes go vegan means adopt a plant-based diet. And, and of course, mm -hmm. this is why I'm very critical. That those people who know me, I'm very critical of any, any people who want to try and reduce what veganism means because veganism is a very kind of powerful revolutionary radical statement you know about justice and everything and so any any anybody wants to slim that down I, i'm kind of i'm kind of opposed to that you know and, and again there's kind of no need to do it the, the best thing for us to do is say well look we, we talk about a philosophy here we talk about a worldview we talk about a vegan mindset and and so that moves you completely away from ideas about diet and ideas about reducing it, it's about bringing about a just world i mean that that was the vision of the pioneers the people who started our movement they had a really radical vision of what they wanted you know because as as we know the vegan movement was started during the second world war you know and that really kind of shattered them they say it was a shattering experience but they were trying to work out why humans have become so violent and they thought that veganism was a solution and they figured out that if we liberate other animals we would also be liberating ourselves. So they've got a really kind of brilliant kind of radical vision of the future, you know, and that's what we should be kind of telling people. We don't have much time environmentally. We probably don't have much time anyway. So there's no point in pussyfooting around and saying, well, in 20 years time, we'll tell you this and we'll tell you that. You know, we've, we've got to get going. You know, we haven't got a lot of time. Definitely. Definitely. And even, even, if, even if we did have a lot of time, the animals don't. You know, like look at look at the speed, look at the the rate that that this is happening to them. Even even if we had didn't have this potential climate disaster on on the cards, it would still be that we don't have time to diddy daddle around this and like fuck around and messing around, giving people uh, weak messages uh, and you know acting like it's not a big deal. Like it's really, and I know some people watching. Uh, again, I, I want to be conscious of people watching and that. I know some of you maybe are new to all of this so maybe you've not been involved in, in animal rights and veganism for as long as anyone in this, in this group has i'd be surprised if you've been involved as long as you <laughs> to be honest um but like the point is like if if this is new to you and this seems overwhelming i understand but but it really is needed for us to be strong and if, if you're not at that place yet where you can be strong it's okay but take some time and really think about it and really prepare yourself and try to get that strong it should be something that you you aim for to be so you know, be, be direct and be truthful and be honest about these things. Don't hide them. Don't hide behind vegetarianism or reduce, reducing your meat from days and things like that. Um, respect people enough to give them the whole truth. I think it's uh, no matter how difficult it is. And if you're not there yet, that, all right, so be it. If you're not ready to go in hard yet, but have that as your aim and, and make it something to aspire to because it's so, so needed. We don't need more plant-based dieters telling people to just do what you can like we don't need more of that we really we've got enough of that right there's, there's far too much of that already you know you look at the youtube influence we talked about youtube influencers earlier unfortunately although there are huge youtube influencers who are doing like vegan food and vegan lifestyle blogging and stuff which is great influence on a lot of people nine times out of ten also saying like you know it's your journey do what you can and shit like that so we really need to balance out this uh you know balance this out basically uh, David, mm -hmm. if, if I may add on that, like, it's not just that, because ahead, uh, my, my biggest problem, well, it's not my biggest, but one of the things that I really don't like, it's like when people, they're not, you know, 0.1% vegan, uh, and they just go ahead, because, you know, the vegan search terms, they, they hit good, so they make vegan recipes, but the next day, it's something, you know, with a, with a dent lab or, or, or something, which is, like, it doesn't make sense to me. So you actually have to have a, a, you know, a strong moral compass when you're talking about that. You have to have, a, you know, it's, it's that. You cannot go halfway. You cannot, you know, steal a little. You cannot kill a little. You cannot, I don't know, be a little mean. So you cannot do that. So you cannot be just a little vegan. So you cannot be a vegan some days. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a different thing. And the, the end goal is that. Uh, like I really want to go like to backtrack that because I have a question or, about uh, on Roger. Like it's it was about the egg thing we were talking and I think I missed it or I just kind of do you want to go ahead or should I go ahead and ask the question? I I, I yeah. well, 
What was the question? I'm, uh, I'm, finding, I'm finding it difficult to follow your train of thought here, to be honest. All right. <laughs> you have so, a question. I, yes. I get that bit. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's about, it's about the, 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 the Hannah, Hannah about the, what she was saying to the producers to ignore the activists. Okay, yeah. It, it was about that. Okay. It, it's a little further back. Should we go that or just forget it? It's, it's okay. I mean, if you, if you, <laughs> I don't know, you've said it now. Yeah. So if you want to ask a question, it's like, well, yes. let's be uh, like, let's, like I, I, let's set, wait, wait, let's set the scene. One second, one second. Yes. So we were talking about previously, we were talking about this Hannah, who was the vice president of communications for the Animal Agriculture Alliance. Yes. And she made a video telling people to ignore vegan activists. She said, retailers, ignore them. They're just trying to destroy your company. They're trying to destroy animal agriculture, ignore them. They don't want what's best for the animals. That's what she said. Can you have a question about that? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, if I remember correctly, okay. Roger said that you, um, it was about, oh man, my, <laughs> my mind just emptied, uh, but it was about <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like, uh, it said that you cannot, you know, aim for a higher welfare standard. So what we could do about this, like, what would be like, what would be the proposal, let's say from the activists? Like if there is one, like ah. this is what I'm thinking because I, I would like to know or just have something to, you know, to to think about that. So I'm sorry, we just we just moved on a lot. Okay, okay. So, so you're so you're talking about like the retailer. What would we give the retailer as a, as a solution other yeah. than yeah. other Be than a higher like, wealth farm? Yeah, because uh, let's say the prime minister would say, okay, higher welfare standards. Uh, let's say cage free eggs. I mean, yeah. So what would yeah. The, what would be the, you know, I think the, the best? Thing I think that's do? down to like what I think that's what Roger was saying actually about like mm -hmm. if we are we if we are approaching retailers with a strong ethical message that look at this look what's happening to the animals wrong and we should stop doing it the chances are they're not going to go vegan are they the retailer's yeah, not just yeah, going to yeah, go yeah. okay we'll go vegan as much as we try we're not going to do it so I kind of agree with Roger on this and that they're probably going to take steps to make it more ethical mm -hmm. to try and tease the activists or more more try and please the public who are now really pissed off about it. Um, and I think I think that for, for ourselves, I think what we would propose is that they, they convert their business to a plant-based business or whatever, depending on what they're selling. Right? Uh, if it's clothing, then it would be like just vegan clothing. If it's food and plant-based food, whatever. Um, and we could provide them ways they can do that. We can provide them alternatives that they can consider. Um, you know, and we can, we, we, if you really want to go the extra mile, you could, if you know business well, you could have uh, cost analysis for them, stuff like that, risk risk analysis, you can, get, you can go, if they want to sit down with you and talk business, you can do all of that, um, if that's your thing. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't feel completely comfortable because I, I wouldn't say I'm like really that well versed on how this would work, but I'm sure we find, I'm sure there, there are, and there are uh, organizations that are doing this and Peter, I know Peter gets heavily involved in this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. whether you hate them or not, people hate them for whatever reason, but they do have the resources to do this. Yeah, I get it. Um, but also they have to, I would agree with Roger in that I don't think we should necessarily advocate for them to go cage free. I think they will go cage free when the public gets so angry at them mm -hmm. for what they've been contributing to. Uh, they'll do with that anyway to try and please the people. Uh, and I think uh, we should just focus on continuing to pressure um, because animal, the animal agriculture and exploitation is wrong. I think our message should, should remain that way. Oh, uh, yes, it, based was about, on, it was about what the, the message should be, and I agree with that. Like, I just want to, you know, to, to make it clear for me. So <laughs> thank you for I mean, that. There's, there's a big supply and demand element here, as we know. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, we, we're, we're dealing with the capitalist mode of production. And so we can't get around that. You know, I mean, a lot, a lot of the capitalist enterprises now are getting on board with the vegan thing and the plant based thing and, and all that. I mean, it was interesting that um, I think Tim Barford from VegFest, um, he was saying that there was a memo that went around the restaurant business about maybe two and a half years ago. And they were talking about vegan options and they were saying, look, you know, there's a lot of uh, vegans now who are going out eating with their non-vegan friends. And if there's four of them and you don't have a vegan option, then you lose all four of them. And so there's like a business reason, just like a rational business reason. And that's why, actually, funny enough, you often don't get any more a restaurant which just has one vegan option, which used to be very common. They tend to have a couple or three because, again, they're in this situation where they know that the vegan, as it were, is checking them out. And that is then going to take them and their three non-vegan friends, as it were. You know, I mean, I know there's all this thing about um, whether you, you should be eating with non-vegans in the first place. But, you know, but the actual restaurant business recognized 
that this kind of you know their their capitalism was being affected by not having a vegan option even if they i mean that they've obviously got no ethical and moral commitments or any of this but neither of mcdonald's or kfc or anything like that i mean they, these are just shithead uh capitalists right and so but the point is you know they'll they'll sell burgers or they'll sell carrots depending on where the demand is so there is a demand and you know supply and demand element to it i mean that's not the entire picture but that's part of it definitely i mean you said about the the one vegan option like i remember i mean that was usually like jacket potato and beans basically in, in in restaurants in the uk for a very long time or chips that was pretty much it basically that's it, you yeah. could have yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah glad that changed god um, that was awesome. That was, uh, um, thanks, everyone. For Ellie, do you have anything to ask? I look like you were gonna you were gonna start talking. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I waffle on. Um, no, I was just gonna say about the activist thing. It, it would be important to get people to uh, not only become vegan but become activists because the nature of people is they do want to be involved in something. They do want to feel a part of things. So if you really do try and involve people and make them feel welcome, and it's not just this random thing that they can do. Like you've got to really pin it to them, the importance of it and get them involved. Because as you say, we haven't got very much time. So we do need more people involving themselves like heavily as much as possible. So I think, you know, saying that not only go vegan, but become active, like actually speak up about it may increase the, you know, the time that it takes um, for them to be vegan and um, may, may come quicker. So, yeah, I just agree with that, essentially. Awesome. All right. Well, I've got I've got another I've got another news story I want to share with you. Actually, this one um, I, I was going to include it in my Friday video, but uh, I ran out of time. It was uh, I was to get get your responses to this, really your reactions to this. I'm going to share the screen one second. So I saw this right, and I thought, wow, this this could be something powerful, right? This something could be something we could discuss. So the title for this article was during the pandemic, we bought our first whole hog, like a whole pig for anyone who's not in the USA. Uh, eating direct and low is harder than it sounds. It was a pain in the ass. So I read that, right? And I thought, all oh, right, this is going to be maybe someone's emotional amount of how they didn't realize how tilt it was going to be to kill the pig. You know, I thought, I thought we might have some kind of I don't know, pro vegan message coming out of this. Like, you know how sometimes you can see these articles, like someone was very emotional and they, they didn't realize how hard it was going to be. And like, I, I had to say goodbye and it was so emotional, it was horrible. And, and I thought, I'm going to be able to rip into this, you know, I'm going to be able to like prove and show that these. It actually turned out to be, believe it or not, to this person's like, this is why people just go to the supermarket and buy whatever is there, regardless of how an animal lived or died. So yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be very like, wow, they must have had a really emotional time. Turns out, right, this dude literally bought the bloody pig, right? And he was complaining because he had to drive four hours to go to a slaughterhouse. So this article is not about emotional or, or emotions, about how difficult it was for him emotionally or how it's literally this person bought a pig, took the pig to wherever he was keeping the pig, emailed the slaughterhouse, drove the pig to the slaughterhouse, and then was complaining about how long it took to email the slaughterhouse, how long it took to, to kill the pig, and also how long it took to pick up for him, and that he had to also cut some of it himself. Like, I, I, just, I just couldn't believe what I was reading. I, I, you know, when you read that first title, you're expecting this to be something completely different. And honestly, this is somebody who's a farmer, right? So I, I wanted to share this and talk about this because it just really shows the level of, I don't even know what to call it, the fucking nonsense that people go through when it comes to, to animals. Like, you know, to, to the point where, like, for this person, this was, this was nothing more than just, uh, I don't know, buying a computer and adding it to the computer to get fixed or something, right? That's what it feels like, you know? What are, what are your reactions to this? Like, did you, would you have gone down the same road I went down thinking it was going to be something emotional, or did you already predict that this was going to be some something? Some, um. I'll, I'll go first because then I need to pee and then I need to go. So I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, um, right, I'll try well, and yeah, go ahead. channel my brain and pretend I don't need to pee. I don't need to pee. Um, <laughs> so I knew actually from the it was a pain in the ass that it would be about yeah. him and it would be about the equivalent of looking after a potato. I can just, uh, just the way that's that's written, like um, that's 
disgusting and repulsive like they're just completely commodifying them as if they mean nothing like oh it's so hard for me i had to like take away the rights of this animal like oh god i'll just pay someone else to do it from now on like what is this nonsense god almighty it's disgusting it's, it, it, it's especially like, it's thick, isn't it? yeah like when you've got that you hope that people would read that and be like hey because that picture there that they're really cute they're really sweet and just to know that it's just all all the kind of the process is very mechanic and it, like they don't matter at all it just it just shows the level of cognitive dissonance and selfishness that people are going through where they just don't consider at all that it might have been a little bit difficult for them like the four hour journey to the slaughterhouse i think it was worse for them mate um that's disgusting uh considerably triggered and mm. for some reason yep. that's made me to pee even more so i'm, <laughs> so I'm gonna oh, go I'm ahead gonna, don't don't worry thank, thank you very much for having me nice to meet you roger and, thanks for joining uh, I, yeah, thank you very much for having me so i'll see you later all right all right see you next time bye <laughs> all right should, should, I, yeah. should i make a couple of observations because um that yeah, that, that ahead, yeah, reminded me of um, of two things. There, there used to be um, this uh, kind of free range uh, pig farm, um, and it was called uh, Real Meat Company. And um, they, they eventually had all these kind of troubles of, of kind of management and everything. I mean, even down to the level of um, they initially started to name the pigs, and then they realised that made made it harder for them to drive them to slaughter, regardless of how far it was. And and uh, so the, then they try to name them with names like Hitler and Goring and names that, that wouldn't create any sympathy. And, and that didn't work either. And so they went back to what all animal farmers tend to do, which is regard them as units of production and just give them numbers instead of names, you know. And so, you know, once you're in that kind of business of, of having an instrumental view of other animals, then you're going you're gonna, to, you know focus on things like oh it took me a long time to get to the slaughterhouse as, as though that's the real problem here of course and also the second part is um there's um there's a film called the animals film which came out in 1982 and it's kind of my generation's earthlings if you like and it was a very powerful film at the time and still is but it's not available online i think you've still got to buy it i think but it's a very powerful thing and there's one scene in it was this farmer outside of a veal unit and um is going well you know we're getting on really well with this farming and you know it's it's we're doing all right the only problem we, we don't like the confinement and he says um because like we have to be here seven days a week and they ended up talking about his confinement because he had to be there uh, on a regular basis because all the prisoners inside as it were needed needed tending to and so this is what tends to happen, you know. Once you once you start to think about other animals in this instrumental way, then all the kind of problems of management and everything become an issue. All the mor all the moral things, apart from animal welfareism, just goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you, Dr. That was really interesting, and it's it's. I didn't think this would by, be by any means the first time. That anyone has said anything about this so like I'm, I'm happy that you also have a story to share where it's you know it's it's, it's yeah like the the whole units of production thing is is it's yeah you know, i think yeah 100 percent. i see i can understand why they do it like this and i can understand what leads them to this but what i don't understand is how they can fight they must have an inner voice right they must all have this inner voice that tells them at some point at some level it's one moment, whether it be a second or for 30 seconds or even a minute, where they're thinking like, there must be something in the back of the brain that says that this is, this is, this is fucked up, you know? There's got to be, I don't get how people fight it. I've never understood how people fight it, you know? And it must be horrible for them. Yeah, well, interesting. Um, I, I did a couple of podcasts with Harold Brown once, and um, he, was a, he was a dairy farmer who became a vegan activist. And he was saying he, he, he runs a, an organization called Farm Kind, and it kind of helps people transform from being animal farmers into arable farms, as it were, and, you know, helps them do all the paperwork and all the rest of it. And um, he was saying that a lot of people 
who really dislike being animal farmers because they do see what, what goes on. And he said he even knows some farmers who, you know, when it's the day for everyone to go to the slaughterhouse, they'll kind of find, you know, some fencing that they need to, need to do at the far end of the farm and they'll disappear on their quad bike for a few hours and then they'll come back to like a, an empty, you know, a set of empty sheds. Now, obviously, we can see that as moral cowardice. But in some ways, farming is kind of based on that in the sense that farmers are used to the ones that will often get a truck and then the truck will take them away. Or if, if they're a smaller operation, they will take the other animals to the slaughterhouse or the house of slaughter. But they'll drop them off and, and then they'll just retreat then. So they won't actually see what goes on. And in fact, you know, during things like the foot and mouth um, kind of crisis, you, you get um, farmers weeping and crying whilst the, their animals are being culled, you know, killed. And the reason for that is yeah. that they don't normally see that bit. And that's the bit of the farming that they don't like. But for reasons of tradition and family expectation, peer group pressure and everything, they kind of stay in it. You know, oh, you know, my, my great grandfather started this farm and all that. They've got a lot of family pressure to keep going and stuff. But um, yeah. it does seem, and I think Michelle uh, Lowe mentioned this about subsidies. It does seem if we can get our head around the subsidies situation, we might be able to get a situation where we can help farmers and we can put pressure on the political system to help farmers to, um, you know, transform in, in, into plant-based farming. And that seems to me, I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of political campaigning, but that's one that I would support, I think. Definitely, definitely. And uh, just before I go to you, Vasilia, <laughs> sorry, man, I, I know we're getting over here rambling at each other, but you know, you brought a few things up that maybe reminded me of, I made a video about um, apex predators where I was just sarcastically saying all different examples of humans being apex predators. And I gave actually three or four examples of, um, you know, of video footage, or evidence of farmers breaking down in tears about the jobs, <laughs> right? The job that apparently is, they're supposed to be so strong and tough and, you know, the animals are just, you know, they, it's, it's, it's just the way the world, right? But yet the people who are doing it for the public are breaking down in tears because they've had to send an animal to slaughter or because one of the cows fell over on, on the ice and they had to have the cow euthanized rather than sending them to a slaughterhouse. And they're breaking down in tears at that. And one farmer crying because you, saw, you may have seen this on the BBC. He was crying because he was talking about having to separate the uh, calves from the mothers. He starts crying. He's like, he's breaking down. He can't, he's like, he's like cut, turn the camera off because he doesn't want them to film him breaking down about it. You know, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's the public doesn't see any of this. The farmers barely even see any of their animals uh, being killed. It, it's just, it's just all, we're just all trying to hide. And the people doing the killing are suffering from PTSD and, and depression and anxiety and, you know, the more, the more likely to have uh, issues with domestic violence. And uh, it's, it's just, it's just pain, isn't it? When you really, when you really start to pay attention, it's incredible what's going on and, and how, you know, yeah, it's, how no it's, a, it's a system ahead, of sorry. use though, isn't it? It's a system of use and tradition. I, I was at an earthlings in, um, in, in Dublin and there was two dairy, female dairy, dairy farmers, and they, they were saying that they kind of liked their job, except that they didn't like to separate the mothers from, from the calves and said that they, they would low, you know, call out for, for ages and ages and ages. And it really kind of got to, to, to at least one of them. And um, I took the opportunity to ask whether they've, they thought it was worse to separate the calves when they were newly born, or in this case, for some of the calves, they separated them about three months so presumably they were going either for so-called beef or or into the dairy dairy um, herd, I suppose. And um, she said that she thought that um, separating them at three months was was worse than at birth because they'd really bonded by them by then. And so again, you know, you got another example of of somebody who's seen the reality of, of it. Because I, I said, well, obviously there's an easy way for you not to suffer, the, you know, this thing about the lowing. And it's kind of not do it. But then again, you know, then you've got kind of, well, how do I do that? You know, I mean, that's their business, you know, it's what they know. It's a little bit like saying, you know, trot, trot along to any kind of person in any kind of business and saying, don't do that. 
do this and you'll need a complete new set of skills probably a complete new set of machinery and it's going to you know it's going to put them in a, in a situation where they're very uncertain about their future whereas in terms of carrying on with what they're doing even though they don't like elements of it at least they know what they're doing and they know they can make a profit and blah blah so it's it's quite complicated even the ones who want to get out of it they've got kind of blocks to it social blocks financial blocks you know definitely I, definitely so yes, uh, uh, before i go on man yeah i think you have something yeah, to say have, on here I have, yeah, yeah i have like two things the, the part with the subsidies because i was at ahead. the end of that it's huge like i know for a fact that i don't know the numbers but i know that the you know the um, let's say they um not the public you know the um, come on man <laughs> uh you know as uh, yeah okay, as, let's say as greeks you know as the the whole public we support that you know by with tax paying and stuff like that so a huge portion of money goes to support that same goes for you know those who make oranges and there is a frost and the oranges you know they go you know ice cubes so i understand that but it's again supply and demand and I would also have to add three things. Like the, I've I've uh, spoken with a dairy farmer, and he said like there were specific animals that he would really bond to, and when they you know at some point they had to go to the slaughterhouse, and at those moments he would broke to tears, and he would be like if a person is missing. So we had that you know that outreach conversation. Also, there is a slaughterhouse owner like. Uh, she, her father and she said that, you know, if someone would tell me, like, if someone were to buy this building, this business, and for, you know, uh, the amount of money that it worth, so I would be out of that. I wouldn't be here. So, and he also said that I really, you know, there are times that I think that what am I doing here? Why is this my business? And, you know, after all this time, even now I do do that. And the, uh, you know, the, the pinnacle, the like the the best and worst comment I've ever heard of that is like uh, there was a slaughterhouse worker and we were about to meet the you know the the, uh, the head of the slaughterhouse so he was leading us to them and say why are you doing vis vigils why do you want to do vigils here and we said you know we love animals we want to be uh, to give them some love for the you know as a as a parting gift if you know just say goodbye in a proper way so he said you know don't um, how would you it's, it's a little bit um, it's a we love animal animals as well it's not uh, uh, don't look that we're killing them but we love like he specific words like word by word this is what he said and then I don't know like it, it makes sense right it makes sense yeah yeah yeah, I think I think there's a lot. I mean, we're, go, we're talking basically about a combination of cognitive dissonance and necessity. People doing this out of out of a, either a perceived or a real necessity, and it's obviously it's perceived because it's not a necessity, but it's 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 perceived by them because, as Roger said, they they don't know a way out, and and there are some organisations that are helping them get out. But I guess I don't I don't know. I guess. They are few and far between, and sometimes it's not so easy. I mean, I, I met farmers in um, my friends' uh, parents are farmers in France, in rural France, and uh, they live in the middle of nowhere, right? Literally in the middle of nowhere, and they're they're beef farmers. Or I don't want to say that, but that's what they would call themselves, all right. And um, they used to have plum trees, fruit trees, and they were getting subsidised by the government to grow plums. And they had said like this was something okay. We if they keep on subsidising us, maybe we can stop the beef farming. They don't want to do this. They don't. They didn't want to do that anymore. Uh, in her own words, she said to me, "I'm getting old. When I was younger, I was I was more strong and I could ignore the feelings and the emotions. But now I'm older, I'm going soft and I can't ignore it anymore. I I feel horrible and sending them to these to, to be killed. I can't do it anymore. But the government pulled the subsidies from the plums. Um, actually, the government paid them." to take the plum trees out, as in to completely chop them down. I don't know why. It was, I don't know. I don't understand that. And they now they subsidize them to continue making, uh, you know, breeding the cows. So they're in a position now where, like, if we stop doing this, we, we can't make money. We're in we're in the middle of nowhere in France. We're in the middle of the countryside. There's there's no there's not like there's like a local hotel you could get a job at or something. You know, there's literally nothing. And um, when she was telling me this, I, I all I could do was just say, like, 
you know, I can I I said I can find you some people to talk to, and and there's you know the language barriers at some level because it's not her who's in charge of it. It's actually her husband, and he speaks no English. And so I'm like trying to find someone who speaks French. You could maybe figure this out in France. And it's like, you know, these the the systems to get this moving. They're they're in place in some countries, but in us it's, it's far more complicated. You know, and in France it's, it's one of those places that's extremely complicated. But they want out. Yeah, they they it, it's really sad actually for for the animals really sad but also sad because these people don't want to do this anymore they don't know what to do though you know and what what do we say to them i i actually i don't know roger if you've ever dealt with this over you know your long uh experience in in working with animal rights and where I don't, i'm guessing you've spoken to f farmers before as well i mean like what would you have said in my position that would the would you have been different to add or or what do you think? No, you you kind of do what you did there is kind of do the best you can really in the circumstance. I mean, I mean, in, as a general matter, of course, it shows that people are not just necessarily just evil, and you know that they, they, as you were, enjoy oppressing other animals or anything like that. I mean, a lot of them, like you say, want help, but they need help. They can't. They can't do it. They um they're in a difficult situation. Um, and then you've got the added burden there of trying to help somebody in a different country as well, which obviously. Is, is a major complication but I mean um, perhaps the future for the movement would be to try to put into into being some kind of facilitation of, of change I suppose and uh, I mean I tend to think that uh, we tried to do that with VIP you know my group vegan information project we tried to get our head around the subsidies system because you know we're, we're still in the EU and everything but it's incredibly complicated. And that, that thing about being paid to chop the trees down, there was a scandal in, in, in Britain in the 80s because people were like being subsidized to grow up the hedgerows and then they'd be subsidized to put them back in again. And, you know, it would be, it would be a bit of a kind of corrupt kind of thing uh, going on, you know. So th there's, a lot, there's a lot of money washing around as far as I can gather. It's just that we, we would like it directed in a, in a particular way, uh, but how to bring that about? I'm I'm not sure. I'd, I I certainly don't have that expertise. It'd be good to it'd be good to find out if somebody really understands the subsidies system. I think it's a little bit like economics. I don't think anybody really understands it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or at least we we would massively benefit from having some individuals who can um, let's say I don't know insert themselves into the political system. And uh, maybe without revealing that they are into animal rights until they are in a position where they can actually influence, you know, maybe some kind of infiltration, but legal, I'm talking legal here, but I think, I, I don't know if they have ever really fully considered that, but I mean, that, that would be the way to go, you know, some, or, or for us to try to reach out to people who are already involved in the legal system and the political systems of whichever country you're in and, and try to uh, get them on side, you know, or to make some, to get, or to give, at least give information, I think. Definitely some, but I wouldn't know where to start for sure with that. I think that's, I think there are some people out there who are kind of touching on this and focus on this. Um, I think uh, maybe I could bring some of these people on to a live stream sometime and they could they could help educate us on it and you know give us some of the insights. Yeah, um, I mean, if anyone knows, if anybody's doing that, you know, I mean, there might be some people out there. I mean, like, I'm not so sure you we need to get into the system, we need to understand it probably, and then you probably act as a kind of lobbyist perhaps. From the outside, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure about getting involved because you know politics. It's all about compromise and all the rest of it. And so I think that once inside a mechanism like that, you 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 know your ideals get squashed down. You know, it's one thing to be opposition and oh, yeah. it's another thing to be in in government, all that kind of stuff. But um, certainly, just understanding it would be a major step forward. I think. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so um, what I'll do then, I'll move through some pretty intense topics. I'm actually going to close up on a on a more positive one, something we can just we can just like uh, a good a feel good one actually. So I'm just going to load it up now. A good story from this week. It was in the five minute Friday as well. If 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 anyone saw that, but uh, it's, I'm going to cover it very briefly. And now, sorry for the time it's taken me to load it up. I'm just trying to pull the link up. But um, this is a good story about some dogs who were actually rescued from the dog meat industry and uh, recently landed in, uh, in the USA. They were rescued from South Korea. I think it's, uh, it's a pretty awesome story. So I'm just going to load it up and get some of the 
photo so you can see. Um, yeah, because so I think it's important that we finish on something that's more positive. And I don't, I obviously, I'm going to guess these people who did this are not vegan, but we've got to take, we've got to take what we can when we can. <laughs> Sometimes we've got to just look at the positives, right? Um, all right. So, yeah, we've got these guys, 200 dogs from South Korea, uh, just landed in the USA. Uh, it says that they, they were rescued by the Humane Society International. Uh, 170 of them, they had golden retriever, poodle, Korean jindos, mastiffs, Pomeranians, terriers, and a Labrador, and 26 other dogs from a meat market and a farm rescue operation. So, like, it, it's, it's pretty insane to imagine, right? Um, for us, I mean, it's insane, but of course, like, you know, it's, it's, if you imagine these dogs were probably were in the exact same position as, as you know, pigs and chickens are in, um, in European countries. And it's incredible that they, they got out of that, you know, 170 of them um, over to the USA now landed in the USA and then they're going to be go, they're going to go in there and yeah, be adopted out, I suppose. And hopefully they'll go to good homes. And oh, I guess all we can really hope for is that this kind of starts to happen uh, in, in the numbers that's been here and more with, pigs, chickens, cows, and all the animals in the animal agriculture industries, not just the ones that are deemed to be, uh, you know, socially unacceptable to do this to. It should be socially unacceptable to do anything like this to all of them. So I guess we can only hope that that day comes sooner does, rather than later, but it's still a that, 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 you know, both are, so. does, so. does it say who rescued them, David? Does it say who, who did that? Who actually did the rescuing? I mean, uh, the, you know, the, Humane Society, apparently. Humane yeah. Society International. Yeah, usually what they do is they work with the local activists because, you know, in, t in terms of Asia in general, and even places like China, which have got a bad reputation and we get a lot of racist uh, comments about places like China and Japan, but they, they've got remarkable yeah. animal advocates who do remarkable things that we don't even do in the West, you know, like stopping, um, stopping lorry loads of, of, of dogs um, going to slaughter and they won't they won't release them, you know, and then the police arrive and then they do a negotiation and get them into wow. into sanctuaries and um, one, one thing that might interest um, your viewers is um, I've got a chapter in a David Nybert um, collection mm -hmm. and another guy writing it's called Peter Lai or Lee L.I. and he was saying that most people in China have never tasted dog meat and in fact, most people are opposed to it. And right. I think a large percentage of the small percentage who have tasted it didn't know that that's where it was at the time. They they kind of bought, just bought what they thought was was meat, and it ended up being dog meat. And so, you know, this general idea right. that you know that, that there's a w widespread kind of commitment to to eating dogs in China is a, is a, is a false perception, bit bit of a myth, apparently. Yeah, it's been brought up by the media every year as well because you know the media they they mainstream media doesn't give a shit about what's they give a shit about clicks and shares right so even even if it is um you know a minority even if this is true uh, it's every year it's going to come up and every year all the the vegans and all the public are going to stand together and shout at china uh, regardless of what the actual reality of the situation is unfortunately mm. we're in the age of misinformation this is this is what we're in now this is 2020 and um so that doesn't surprise me at all but i'm glad i'm glad i didn't know that so i'm glad um i've 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 resisted falling into the trap of of um, you know attacking china every year this comes around and i tend to try to use it to um you know post about the the all of the animals and catch people's attention by you know calling out the hypocrisy when get angry about the dogs that that's kind of how i do it and i think mm -hmm. i would recommend definitely that vegans do that rather than joining the mob and attacking China. I'd always recommend that talk about the dog festival too, but make sure to link it to the fact that this is happening every single day, but it's just happening to other animals right where you're sat. You know, I think it's always important mm. that we bring it. Yeah. Home. I mean, like yeah. Um, there's cultural difference everywhere. I mean, it's, it's just a ma matter of culture. And obviously we are talking about cultural speciesism here, but it, it varies from nation to nation. For example, in, in Japan, foxes are seen as rather sacred, and look, look what we do to foxes. So you know they they yeah. tend they they tend to, you know, kind of look at us in a very pejorative way because of that. So you know you you got to be careful if you're if you're going to kind of slate an entire kind of nation because really 
they've just got a different version and it co it comes from our early socialization where we get we get taught eventually that there are different categories of other animals you know some some are food some are pets some are to be worn some are so-called vermin and all this kind of stuff some are free living beings or wildlife that kind of thing and of course what the chinese do from our eyes is, is they make categorical mistakes because they're, they're eating the pets and that's wrong because that's not what you do with pets the way we use pets is by petting them you know so it but it's all about animal use you know i mean it, should, it just so happens that they're getting it wrong from our cultural perspective in the same way as we're getting it wrong from a japanese perspective about foxes it's just it's just different kind of strands of cultural speciesism that's all that's going on really absolutely I see. You, I see. I see. You, know, you can't get a word in right now, no, right? I, I, I like. I like, to, I, I like to listen. I like to listen, and it, this is really true. Like it's because you. I mean, at some point, I, I was not born vegan, and probably most of vegans were not born vegans. Maybe this is something that's going to change in the future. But like, I grew up, you know, petting dogs and eating pigs. So how should I be? You know, the one saying uh, you're a bad person. Or you're, uh, I don't know, you're crazy, you're this, you're that. When I used to do the same to a different animal. So it all comes to, like, there is no need for that. So why do we perpetuate the thing that there is absolutely no necessity? And, you know, I do not want to, you know, in, uh, you know, in, in you know, deep arguments about what's necessary, what's not necessary. But, I mean, even if that's the case, like, they have a festival for that because it's the Yulin festival. We have Easter, you know, with like, especially in Greece, like millions, like two to three millions lambs each year. So, I mean, it's it's a different kind of festival. The, uh, the outcome for the animal is the same. And you can only, you know, look the the problem of the perspective of the victim. And the victim is either the dog or the cat or the, the lamb or the cow or the chicken. So, I mean, it's, it's just a different exactly. animal. You're totally right. And I've had this discussion with people like I, I try to call this hypocrisy out when people get upset about eat, they get upset about the eat festival, right? The mass slaughter. And they say, oh, these, you know, they, you get you get these Islamophobes coming out of the out of the woodwork. They go, oh, the, the Muslims are disgusting. Their festival is disgusting, blah, blah, blah. They're like, um, I'm sorry, you're Christian. So well, what do you do at Christmas every year? <laughs> it may not it may not brand, be branded as animal sacrifice, but that's what it is, animal sacrifice. Like, just because you don't call it animal sacrifice doesn't change it. Uh, and, and, you know, in America, you have Thanksgiving, you sacrifice animals multiple times a year if you're American. Um, and you call it, you know, you don't call it sacrifice again. So, again, yeah, it's it's the common thing that people like to pull the others to say, look, they're the ones that are bad. And they very rarely look inside, you know, look look at themselves and say, wow, yeah, either I'm doing the same thing or, or I'm doing something very similar. It, and that's I, lo I love calling the shit out because it really angers people to compare Eid to Christmas. It really pisses people off because of, it really is close to home. And it's true. Like, it's true. I don't, I don't care what they say. Um, and they don't just kill the animals. They eat them. Actually, they donate the, uh, the bodies, the, the, the flesh to the poor, actually. Um, so if anything, if you're going to look at Eid and Christmas, I'd say Eid is they're both immoral but eve is actually more moral because they don't even eat the, eat, eat the animals themselves they give it to other people and with christmas you're sacrificing an animal so you can stuff your faces and you don't even need to do it there's no necessity there's an there's an argument to say those poor people may even need the 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 the, the you know food whatever you want to call it i'm, I'm not making an argument but i'm saying they'd have more of an argument for that and people have for christmas right so I, I do like to call this out, and, and it's, I think it, it links in with the xenophobia with China as well. There's also Islamophobia with Eid, there's, it, and it's, yeah, it's very common, very, very common. And then they do the same back, though. I mean, when I was in India, I met many Indians who were also very xenophobic towards the West. They, they would say, oh, the way we do the animal, uh, you know, slaughter and the farm yeah, it's not like what you do in the west you guys are disgusting like so it works both ways don't get me wrong um every every community every society is is xenophobic or, or racist in one way or another to another community or society it's it's not a uniquely western trait unfortunately well i don't know it's unfortunately or fortunately but it's it's just the fact of it it's not something that only the westerners do it's uh it's really common yeah but um 
I guess we'll round up. Yeah. So uh, thank you both for joining and vegan gaze, Ellie, who's who's left early to go for a pee and didn't come back. <laughs> but that's all good. Uh, and thank you both for joining. It's been it's been um, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I'll put links to both of your YouTube. Roger, do you have a YouTube channel as well? Do you? I've seen you on. Yeah, I do. Not, I don't know if you, you do. Yeah, I got I got a YouTube one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah. I'll. Okay, perfect. I'll, I'll link that as well, Ben. And uh, obviously, Vasilios, I'll link yours to Vegan Skunk or Asvos in, yes. in Greek. Yeah. Uh, I'll, link, I'll, link, I'll link that too. Um, and uh, for those of you that haven't seen yet, I just want to also announce the two videos coming uh, in the coming week. One Wednesday, which is a very, very dry, sarcastic parody um, that I made with my partner, Annie. Uh, Annie is playing the role of a vegan girl, and I'm playing the role of a super alpha masculine anti-vegan meat eater and it's just uh i think you'll like it i think it, it encapsulates not only the vegan arguments but it also encapsulates the kind of um toxic masculinity argument as well like it, it kind of deals with both of them so i'm sure it'll be uh, i'm sure it'll go down well and then um uh also on sunday uh we have the, uh, a really powerful live stream i'm sure it's going to be powerful with uh the founders of anonymous for the voiceless uh, where they're going to be responding to and answering about every single accusation and rumor that has ever been made about them, the ones that we find anyway. So if you're interested in that, if anyone's watching and you want to know some answers to some questions, join us for the live stream. We're going to be answering questions live, and it's it's no old part. Like it's there's going to be obviously we're going to keep it civil, we're going to keep it reasonable, but we will be open to answering almost any question. Um, and I'm going to make sure to be tough and we're going to get to the bottom of some of these rumors. So I hope um, we can all make that as well. Um, again, thanks so much for joining. And uh, you're always welcome to the live stream every Sunday. So if you ever want to join again, just drop me a message and you can jump on. Okay. Well, thanks very much. And thank you for putting up with my boring old fart rambling. So, no, uh... no, it was really essential. <laughs> thank you. It was really, really, it was really Yeah, I really enjoyed it. you here. Take man. care, everyone. It was really good. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Φτάσει μέχρι το τέλο του βίντεο. Κάντε εγγραφή στο κανάλι και πατώ το notification bell για να παίρνετε συντοποιήσει κάθε φορά που ανεβάζω βίντεο. Μπορείτε να με ακολουθήσετε στα social media από κάτω και μπορείτε να υποστηρίξετε το κανάλι μου στο Patreon. Μέχρι την επόμενη φορά γίνει αλλαγή που θέλει να δει.